Live from the 607, it's the Ocho Duro Parlay Hour, where we're talking everything going on in the world of sports. Join in the conversation on social media with the hashtag ODPH, because here we go. Welcome to part two of a special edition of the ODPH podcast, better known as the Ocho Duro Parlay Hour. What's happening, everybody? Thank you so much for joining us this week. My name is Ken M. Joining me in studio, as always, you know him. He's the co-host. His name is Padawan J. Still a nicer room than the AEW press conference room. Yes, exactly. No chairs have been thrown as of yet. But fear not, we have a lot of time to go. So who knows what's going to happen? Because we have a special guest host in the building as well. You know him as the host of the 3FN Podcast. You know him as the host of 607 TWS, the wrestling show, and a few other things going on because he's one of the busiest people in all of podcasting. But he took enough time to come here to talk some NFL football with us. You know him, Rich from 3FN. What's up? ODPH Society. And I'd also like to add in, I am now distancing myself from my relationship with Ace Steel. It's a little <laughs> rocky right now. I can't be responsible for any rabies shots that are being handed out. I'm just throwing it out there. He cu- he's Full transparency, folks. Exactly, because he's one of the few podcasters out here calling it right down the middle. But you know this if you're following 607 TWS, as you should be. And how you get there simply, you swing on over to odphpodcast.com. You check out what's going on in the directory. The link is right there along with the ODPH. Friends of the show under the classified section, the parlay point section, T Public Patreon. You know it if it's anything and everything. That is the ODPH. It can be found at odphpodcast.com. But we're here to talk some NFL football in this edition. Last mm-hmm. podcast, we talked all about the AFC. Now it's time to shift the direction to the National Football Conference and give you our breaks down of the East, the South, the North, the West, and who's going to the Super Bowl. Wait a minute. There's another conference in football? Surprisingly, yes. I thought we were done already. Well, we I thought t- we were going to talk more wrestling right now. What's well, going on? Well, I mean, we, we have to give a uh, guess some due because, I mean, there's some Dallas Cowboy fans that listen to the show. <sighs> I don't know. <laughs> Shout out, Dre. Uh, but we're definitely got to talk about a little bit of the le- the NFC lease, as we like to call it, because the NFC East is one of the most um, unique divisions in all of football. So we're going to give you our takes on that. So, Pat? So we're starting with the worst division in football? Listen, we got to get the shit out of the way. Exactly. Okay. All right. All right. I know the NFC East fans out there, all those Giants, Eagles, and Cowboy fans. Those exist. And I don't think there's any uh, We Are Commanders, bum, 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 fans out there. But if there is, I I don't apologize to any of you. Like better teams. <laughs> Listen, all I'm saying to this division is I hate half of you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like better teams. Exactly. This will probably be a shorter edition of the podcast, but hey, that works out after you hear the fantastic work done on the AFC. But we have to <laughs> do give some attention to the NFC lease. So, Pad, why don't you kick us off? Yeah, so looking at the, the NFC East division standings from last year, you had the Dallas Cowboys win the division with a record of 12-5. and five. Philadelphia Eagles finish in second place with, with a record of 9-8. and eight. The Washington football team finish with a record of 7-10. and 10. And the New York football giants finish in last with a record of 4-13. and 13. Well, let's just uh, kick it off. Uh, listen, in all honesty, all jokes aside, we're going to give the NFC the same treatment we gave the AFC. And uh, here's it is. Uh, the East is, you know, the NFC least, as we like to call it, is just one of those divisions that seems to always underachieve, even if there's some solid stuff on paper. <laughs> I'm going to disagree with, like, I don't think we're going to have the same order come out this year as we did last year. Uh, right now, the Eagles made some really good moves in the offseason, uh, so I'm kind of impressed by them. I think the Eagles probably will take this division. Like I said, we'll be breaking that down, obviously, more. Uh, with that being said, though, the Cowboys... Really questionable stuff over there, Cowboy fans. You know, I, I'm going to throw this out there. The fact that you sold the house for Zeke for a running back in the year 2022, God knows why J- Jerry Jones, still, who still thinks it's the 90s and it's the second coming of Emmitt Smith, that those days are over. Mm-hmm. And the fact that you lost Amari Cooper over it. Although if Amari Cooper was was a little bit smarter, he would have just stayed in Las Vegas or well, Oakland at the time and moved to Las Vegas. But, you know, hey, he wanted that bag. So yep. congratulations, you're on the Browns. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's facts. So, you know, it is what it is. And there is a little bit of sourness for me, but that's okay. We got Devontae Adams now, so it's all good in, o- in, in Las Vegas. But uh, I don't understand that, Cowboys fans. Uh, and I know you're probably all pissed off about it as well. With that being said, Dak is one of the most inconsistent quarterbacks in the history of the NFL, not just currently. And on top of that, you have uh, the one silver lining is they still have a great defense back there, uh, which when it shows up, it's great, mm-hmm. I should say. 
Uh, the New York football Giants just suck. And if you're a Giants fan, I am sorry. You might want to think about becoming a Jets fan because I think finally they're going to be on the rise. Uh, or, you know, a Buffalo Bills fan and be a true New York fan because, you know, both those teams play in New Jersey. The Bills are the only team that plays in New York, and they're also the only team that wins. Right now you can get really cheap tickets to both Giants and Jets games, so if you've ever thought about going, you might want to cash in on that because they are basically giving them away. Uh, and then last but certainly not least, the Commanders. And I know we already have a gimmick for the Falcons, but you could have used that same gimmick for the Commanders because, let's be honest, all the way from ownership down, it is a shit show. By the way, a literal shit show because shit leaks from pipes in the stadium. If And if you don't yes. believe things are bad with the Washington Commanders, go back and look at the first week of training camp and how many fans showed up to view said training camp. You can probably count them on one hand. Yeah. And, and, and once again, I know... There's fans of those teams that are like, Rich, you're being hard, and you're a Raiders fan. Yeah, my team sucked for many, many years. So I know how it feels to have a really shitty team. But here's the thing. None of you own up to the fact that your teams are bad. Now, with that being said, I think that the Eagles, uh, before we get dive too deep in, I think the Eagles are going to have a decent record. They're going to be a decent team. They look great on paper. They made some really good moves. And the Cowboys will still be better than the other two teams in the division. If you're a Giants or Commanders fan, I'm selling, selling, selling. Uh, we'll get into that more in a minute. But even with the new head coach in the Giants, uh, the fact that the Giants think that Dab- Dabble is the reason why the-, the Bills are as good as they are, he's not. Yeah. The Bills are the reason the good Bills are – the reason the Bills are as good as they are is because they have – a great quarterback, top five quarterback in the league in Josh Allen. And B, they have one of the best defenses in the league. As a matter of fact, ranked number one defense last year. Probably going to be ranked one to three this year as well. So with that being said, there's your answer why the Bills are so great. Uh, Dabble sold you on a a bill of sales that he can't back up, and he doesn't have the talent to do it in New York. So uh, congratulations on buying yourselves another two, three years of uh, mediocrity. Uh, bad, your thoughts. <laughs> yeah, no, I definitely like the improvements Philly made on the offensive side of the ball. Obviously, they have the greatest quarterback in NFL history in Ian Book. Uh, coach, your jersey's in the mail. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Uh, you know, they got Jalen Hurts coming back. You know, had a decent season last year. 3,100 yards passing, 16 touchdowns, 9 interceptions. You know, but he they made some improvements on the offensive side, like we mentioned. Obviously, Devontae Smith uh, back for another year. Uh, A.J. Brown, one of the names we mentioned in the AFC show that they added, should play off dividends for them. Uh, then you've also got Dallas uh, Godair at tight end, so that should work out very good for them. And obviously the Philly defense, not not a home run out of the park, but hey, they're very good. Uh, on the other side, you've got Dallas who, listen, Dak's still there, but I agree with Rich. He's very suspect at best. The man can't, clearly doesn't know how to work a playoff game when 13 seconds are left on the, on the clock. Uh, Zeke Elliott, suspect at best. He's shown flashes of brilliance, but never anything consistently. They got C.D. Lamb and Michael Gallup there at the wide receiver core, uh, you know, because obviously, as Rich mentioned, you know, Amari Cooper gone. Can either Gallup or Lamb step up? We'll see. You know, and then they've got uh, Dalton Schultz there at the tight end, uh, added Demarcus Lawrence uh, on the defensive side of the ball. You know, so defense, you know, we'll see. Micah Parsons is still there. Trayvon Diggs is still there in, in the backfield of the defense. Defense should be good. You know, will it be a smash hit, something to write down in in the halls of Canton as one of the best defenses in NFL history? Probably not, but it should help win them some games. Then you got the New York football giants, and hey, first time, long time, shout out Danny Dimes. <laughs> you know, you've got Saquon Barkley back, which from what I've been reading, it sounds like Saquon Barkley is finally healthy, which should help a little bit. But at the same time, fucking Danny Dimes has got nobody to throw to if he can even throw. You know, they've got Kenny Galladay as their wide receiver. Kadarius Tony is another wide receiver. And Wandale Robinson is one of their other wide receivers. Don't worry if you're at home saying who, you're not alone. And then at their tight end, they got Daniel Bellinger. Pat, what are you talking about? They got Galladay, the greatest wide receiver of all time. You, uh, The man who I caught more NFL touchdown passes than last year. Have you been hanging out with Snoop Dogg again? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, I caught more touchdown passes than Galladay. This is year. true. This is true. This is absolutely true. I mean, let's face it. Okay, Washington is Washington. Well, and that's the thing with Washington, too. I mean, they got Antonio Gibson, a running back, who's, yeah, he's all right. You know, and then re- receiver core, they got Terry McLaurin, uh, Jahan Dotson, Curtis Samuel. I've only heard of one of those guys. And they've got Carson Wentz as their starting quarterback this year. But what's the one suspect thing with Carson Wentz? His legs. Yeah. What's the one thing that sucks with Washington? Their field. Uh, shitty field plus bad legs is a recipe for disaster. Exactly. So they're going to be irrelevant. They're going to wind up in dead last in this division. And this is saying a lot being in the NFC least. There's not a lot of ho- uh, hype or hope there. I mean, maybe they'll sneak out some wins here and there. I mean, I could see them win in six. I think that's an easy statement to make. 
I don't see him doing anything more. I'm sorry, Carson Wentz is not exactly an, a super upgrade to get you over the hump that is you need. I think the team will play hard, though. I mean, that's one thing with Ron Rivera there. He does get the most out of the team. I'm not saying he gets a lot out of them, but he gets the most out of what they give him. And he's got his Reebok suits so he can wear them on the sideline. Yes. Know. So it's that's the win-win right there, but that's not going to be enough to win this division. Then you take a look at those New York football giants. Hey. So Giants fans, kind of, hi. First time, long time, as Pat said. Being somebody that has been around Brian Dabble a few seasons, <laughs> let me tell you this. You need to temper those expectations right down. I know that Joe Schoen is your new GM, and listen, he worked under Brandon Bean, so if you're going to be copying the Bills playbook, it's going to take a little while to get there because you guys have a lot of baggage to unload. However, this is not going to be the season to do it. Danny Dimes is not Josh Allen. Nope. The one thing Josh Allen has that Danny Dimes doesn't is a lot more mobility and running with the pocket because the Bills have a bad line, but the Giants have an even worse one, and Danny Dimes is nowhere near as fast as Josh Allen Mm -hmm. or can take the hits as Josh Allen can. Saquon might be healthy. He might be 100%, but let's face it, he's not going to be getting any more yardage than Devin Singletary did in his time in Buffalo. It's just not going to happen. I wish it would because I do like Saquon as a player, but it's just – that line is not going to do anything to really help your running game. I'll say it was, if I remember right, and I'd have to go and look, but like it wasn't until the latter half or like the latter third of the season last year before Buffalo had a running back crack 100 yards. Exactly. I mean, that's the one thing that you need a line to run in the NFL. I'm sorry. The Giants just don't have one. The Bills don't have one either, but Josh Allen made a lot of magic happen. I'm sorry. I don't see a Houdini cape appearing on Danny Dimes. He might show some great plays here and there. But he's obviously not the future of your franchise. I'm sorry at this stage. Like you're going to write him out and see what you got. Tyrod's a way better fit at this stage. Uh, looked it up. Uh, the Bills did not have a running back crack 100 yards until Singletary did it on January 2nd against the Atlanta Falcons, which was week 17. Exactly. So, Giants fans, I'm hoping you guys find a way to score some offense. And you will at times, but the one thing I'm going to tell you you're going to get absolutely frustrated is some of that play calling is going to be we're going to run all the way down the field, get to the 15-yard line, and then we're going to try passing in for three downs. And I just want to point one thing out before anyone goes and corrects me. Yes, I realized uh, there was a person in uh, Week 14 against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers who had 109 yards rushing. That was the quarterback, Josh Allen. I'm talking running backs. Yeah, exactly. Like no, And, and that's the whole thing. We're looking at positions because everybody's saying, well, Saquon's back. He's going to get him over the hump. Not with this offense, you're not, unfortunately. Like you guys will be able to sneak some wins in here and there in that division. I could see an eight and nine legitimately. Yeah, yeah. They did have a solid draft, but to get rid of the former regime, it's going to take some seasons. And with the lineup you have right now, I'm sorry, Kenny Galladay, Rich had more touchdowns than he did last season. This is a fact. Your wide receiver core is definitely um, suspect, to say the least. Kadarius Tony, I did like you know coming out, but has not really proven too much in the NFL. And you're not really striking a lot of fear in comparison to the two other teams that we're going to talk about. Uh, and just want to know, uh, if the Giants want to make any sort of noise, they're going to have to do it early because the second half of their schedule, yikes. Uh, they open up against the Tennessee Titans on the road, and then they play Carolina, Dallas, Chicago, Green Bay, Baltimore, Jacksonville, Seattle, bye week in week nine. Then they got Houston, Detroit. Listen to this for the closeout of the year. So week 12 in Dallas. Then they play the Commanders, Eagles, Commanders, Bum, 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 Vikings, bum, bum. Colts, and Eagles. That is a lot of divisional games that second half of the year. So if you want, if Giants fans even want to, you know, a, t- an expectation of maybe making the third playoff spot, you know, wild card spot, you got to get that in early because yikes, that second half schedule. Well, that's the whole thing. I mean, their division is so bad they might be able to sneak in there. Like I'm not saying Dallas and Philly are locks by any stretch of the imagination. Philly, I think, is going to win this division because I think they're slightly better all around. Their running game doesn't really scare me with Miles Sanders. No. I want to say this. But Jalen Hurts does have some wide receiver weapons now with A.J. Brown, and Devontae Smith can be a a game changer if they get him in the right enough schemes. I I fully believe that. It just depends on what they're going to do in Philly overall. But I think for what they need to win the division, they have enough pieces in place. Dallas, uh, Dallas is one that... They've made improvements on defense. Tra- Trayvon Diggs has been a diamond in the rough for them. I'd say so. And they have made proper adjustments there. But at the end of the day, you went all in on Zeke. Zeke is starting to slow down because of the workload you gave him. You did lose Amari Cooper. You have, I mean, C.D. Lamb, you have him out there. Sure, that's, yeah. a big, that's a big move. But can they step up? But that's the whole thing. And as we've seen, 
you have you, you, they're like the Browns of the East. Like we talk about the Chargers. I mean, on paper, all the promise in the world, none yeah, of the results. Yeah, you just the cream does not rise to the top. It just kind of sits there and floats. It's it's like a fuddy duddy. Oh yeah, yeah. What are you talking about? You know, you quarterback sneak it, and then you just you know run too far, so the time runs out, so you don't want a playoff game. Genius uh, coaching levels from the Dallas Cowboys. That's why they went so far in the playoffs. I need that Stephen A. montage right now. Oh my god. Uh, it, 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 I got a lot, but I will say this. The Eagles are going to get a lot of help from the NFL. Yeah. Because their schedule. (laughs) Holy fuck, yeah. Ready for this? The Detroit Lions, the Minnesota Vikings, the Washington Commanders, the Jacksonville Jaguars, the Cardinals, the Cowboys. Then they get the bye in week seven, which is a little early, but still. Then after the second half, Steelers, Texans, Commanders, Colts, Packers, Titans, Giants, Bears, Cowboys, Saints, Giants, to end the season. They've got to have that locked up by mid part of the season or else it's going to be a yee. Yeah. Well, I want to point this out. They have one of the latest schedules ever, man. And mm. there's some pretty terrible teams they get to play year round. Yeah, so they don't lock it up. I mean, they got to have it locked up by mid part of the season otherwise it's going to be dicey. Yeah, like that's the whole point. This this whole division should be just easy one and done. Dicey, dicey, dicey? No, no, Brandon Schaub fans? Jeez. Uh, <laughs> oh, jeez. I forgot about that. I mean, that's, but that's one of the situations that you have with this this whole division in a nutshell. It's the, the teams here that are the upper echelon mm-hmm. should be winning this outright. Yeah, like, and, yeah and, and looking at the Dallas Cowboys schedule, this is why I say Philly needs to have this locked up by mid part of the season because the second half of the schedule gets dicey. Uh, Phil, Dallas, on the other hand, tested at the start of this season, second half, yeah, not so much. Uh, so they open up against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and then they have the Cincinnati Bengals, New York Giants, Washington Commanders, L.A. Rams, Philadelphia Eagles, Detroit Lions, Chicago Bears, uh, and then they've got a bye week in Week 9. Then in the second half of the year, they have the Green Bay Packers, Minnesota Vikings, New York Giants, Indianapolis Colts, Houston Texans, Jacksonville Jaguars, Philadelphia Eagles, Tennessee Titans, and the Washington Commanders the second half of the year. There are a lot of winnable games for them the second half of the year. Who did Jerry Jones do favors for that they (laughs) got the Commanders in Week 18? Yeah. Uh (laughs) Let's put it this way. If the season is close between them and the Eagles, Cowboys win the division because they're going to get a win at the end of the season. Because the Commanders, listen, man, nothing against, you know, the wonderful Commander fans. Yeah. (laughs) Formerly the Washington football team. Uh, listen, <laughs> I just don't understand how you have any hope. The only stat that the commanders lead is their field is injured. Their field is injured more quarterbacks than any other field in the league in the last 10 years. Mm-hmm. So that's the only stat that you lead the NFL in. You have the, you have the most questionable quarterback of all time in Carson Wentz as your starting quarterback. Yeah. I do love me some scary Terry, but I'm going to love me some scary Terry when he moves to a better team after his contract. So, yeah. cause you know, he's out of there. Uh, the front office is horrible. They're being investigated and indicted by the United States government. <laughs> that should tell you all you need to know. And the coaching staff, you know, Ron Rivera, I like Ron Rivera. Yeah, I, don't I, do, I, do. I do like Ron Rivera, but I just don't think he has a support from the office. Cause the office is, woo. and you know, let's, let's, let's be honest. They care so little about their team. They literally play in a field where shit is leaking from the pipes onto fans. Facts. They literally play for a team where their fans almost f- killed Jalen Hurts last season when they fell out of the stands. Yeah. That should never happen. Honestly, I forgot about that. Yeah, that should never happen anywhere. Fans mm-hmm. should be safe no matter where they are. I've never been to a stadium where if you leaned up against something, you might die. But I guess that's how it works in Washington. And they're not doing anything to fix this. The best thing that could happen is the United States government goes after Dan Snyder and makes him sell the damn team. Mm -hmm. And if they sell the team, because that's going to go to a high bidder because it costs a lot of money to own an NFL team, maybe they'll get a new stadium, and then maybe, just maybe, they'll be a competitor. But that's not anytime soon. Buy low, sell high. Uh, And just to be fair, the Washington Commanders uh, schedule, they have the Jacksonville Jaguars, Detroit Lions, Philadelphia Eagles, Dallas Cowboys, Tennessee, Chicago, Green Bay, Indianapolis, Minnesota, Philly, Houston, Atlanta, the Giants, uh, by week in week 14. Then they have the Giants, San Francisco, Cleveland, and Dallas to close out the year. So... I guess to wrap this division up, Rich, who you got? So I'm going to go with first place in the division going to the Philadelphia Eagles. I think they're going to, looking at their schedule and everything, I really think that it'd be, I think 12 games is really reasonable for them. I think they will end the season at, uh, what is it, 12 and 5 now? 
Yes. 17 yes. yes. So 12 and 5. I think right behind them, though, is going to be the Dallas Cowboys, much for the same reason. So the Dallas Cowboys are going to win 10 or 11 games. Listen, they have an easy schedule. Their defense is good. I'm not sold on the offense. But listen, when it comes to the regular season, as long as the Cowboys have a reasonable schedule, which they do this year, they're usually good for, you know, a 10-win season. So 10, 11 games, even though I crapped on them a little bit, folks, I still think they're going to you have a winning season. With that being said, here comes the drop off. In third place, I got the New York Football Giants. Yes, I said the New York Football Giants, but don't be excited Giants fans because I think you're only going to win 7 games. Oof. 7 games and I think I'm pushing it there. I think that you're probably going to be more likely to win 5. So we'll say 5 to 7 games, but I'll give you some credit. I'll give you some hope. You might get 7 games. And that's saying that your coach has his shit together. Now, if you start off the season 0-2 and 0-3, and get closer to the five wins, yeah. maybe even lower. But you, you're lucky because you're not going to be in last place because you have the Washington Commanders. And I fully anticipate the Washington Commanders are going to be fighting for that position with the Houston Texans of who can lose the most football games. I think Washington is going to probably squeak out two victories, maybe. So I think they're the only – because. They're going to even lose on getting the first round, the first pick of the draft. They're going to lose to the Houston Texans, who are going to win one game. They're going to win two. And, and you know what they're going to do? They're going to upset the Cowboys. The, the Eagles yeah. will lock the division. And then the last game for the Cowboys, the Cowboys will lock a playoff spot. So the last game won't matter for the Cowboys. And they'll beat the Cowboys, which will give them their second win. And it'll be a big F you from the Cowboys to the, the, the commanders as they get the second pick in the draft, uh, which is not going to help them anyway. So it doesn't matter. If you're a Washington fan, just, just stop. Yeah. Listen, as a person who sat through some really bad years as an Oakland Raiders fan, listen, there's the, I, I applaud you for not being bandwagon jumpers. I applaud you. However, get in, get buckled in for a long road. As a person who was on a team that did not have a good winning season since 2002 and we didn't get another one until 2015, that's 13 years. No, actually 2016, I lied. That's 14 years. And then there was a couple years where we were, eh, and now we're, we're good. But let's say... I had a 14-year drought of being just terrible. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Washington, that's what you have to look forward to. Pad? Uh, I've got the Philadelphia Eagles finishing in first place, Dallas Cowboys finishing in second place, the New York Giants finishing in third, and then the Washington Commanders finishing in fourth. Although I will say both the Commanders and Giants will have worse records than they did the year before. Uh, so the Washington had seven wins, Giants had four. They're both going to finish with worse records. I could Ooh. see that. I could see that happening. I agree with it. I think we're all in unison about this one. It's Phillies to lose. Dallas is right behind them. Uh, and then there's a huge drop-off, a very big gap. It's like a cliff. Yes. And the Giants will somehow look into the third position because, that, you know, they'll probably sweep the commanders. Yeah. That'll be the, that'll be the deciding factor. There will be a couple of games like the Giants might be in it. The Giants fans get all excited. Oh, this is our year. It's not. And then reality sets in. Yeah. So – uh, Eagles fans, you got to be feeling pretty safe. Dallas, I would be feeling okay too because honestly, you could sneak that division out, but just on paper right now, Philly's looking a lot better. So that said, let's go to the A or the NFC South, Pat. Yeah, so uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers won this division last year with a record of 13 and 4. New Orleans Saints finished in second with a record of 9 and 8. The Atlanta Falcons finished in third with a record of 7 and 10. And the Carolina Panthers finished in last with a record of 5 and 12. Rich, how are you feeling about this division? Oh, my God. Uh, so, the, what can we say? The only reason the NFC South isn't worse is because at least they're not the NFC East. Yes. Right? Is that, is that no, really where we are? That's fair. Um, so, listen, I think we're going to have a little bit of change up in here as well. Obviously, with the return, you know, Tom Brady coming back, I know that a lot of the speculators are that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are going to be on top. Uh, but, you know, they could be. I think that they still have the best team in that division, which I don't know how that says a lot. However, I'm, I'm actually looking at the New Orleans Saints. I think the Saints have uh, done some good stuff on defense. They're getting some good defensive uh, draws there, including uh, the acquisition of the Honey Badger. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's going to really help them out on the defensive side of the ball. Also on the offensive side of the ball, I think this is the, you know, they're giving the shot to Jameis Winston. So I think he has a lot to prove. Much like Lamar Jackson, I don't think he's going to be the MVP. Right, right, but right. I do think he might step it up. He looked very good in preseason and i know it's preseason but listen this is a guy who's literally fighting for his nfl career currently so i think that as long as he can stay healthy which is a big key mm. I, I think that you might see a really good year out of him now does that mean he's going to go on to be one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time probably not however i do think that in a contract year where he's literally fighting for his nfl career i think that you're going to see a little something out of there uh carolina panthers speaking of quarterbacks have something to prove baker mayfield i will throw this out there carolina 
I mean, they waited on it and they got a good deal and they brought in Baker. And I think that that was the best thing they could do. Uh, You still, you know, you're still a team that has a a pretty high powered offense. I'm not as big of a fan of McCaffrey as everybody else is, but still, hey, he's great. Mm. And on top of that, they're they're a young team. They're a fast team. I think Baker's going to fit right in. Baker has a big chip. He needs to prove that the uh, uh, $200 million man who is now sitting out for 11 games was the wrong choice. And he's also in a big contract year for himself. So. It works out as well. And then, of course, let's be honest, the basement dwellers, the Falcons, because (laughs) who is Atlanta? What is Atlanta? Exactly, gentlemen. And, uh, yeah, uh, when you have no quarterback, uh, I mean, they have a quarterback, obviously, let's be honest. It's not the future. But it's not the future, and it's definitely not as good as Matt Ryan. Mm -hmm. You're in trouble. And, uh, obviously, they, you know. They're building and they're rebuilding, and hopefully they can come back better than ever, if you will. They, they play in a gorgeous building. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think that's going to matter at the end of the day currently. Uh, so, like I said, as when we when we start breaking them down a lot more, I'm expecting big things from three of the, the, the teams in this division, believe it or not now. And I don't think it's as easy as people thinking that, oh, Tom Brady is still the GOAT, so therefore he's going to just have the Buccaneers walk into the playoffs. I think it's going to be a harder ride because I think the Saints and the Panthers – have a lot to prove this year for different reasons. I, I don't think, I agree with Rich, I don't think the Buccaneers have as e- an easy route as they've had the last couple of years to get in the playoffs. I think they'll still be very good. Obviously, you do have Tom Brady coming back after he retired for all of 45 days, pissed off his wife, allegedly. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, still got Leonard Fournette there at the running back. Uh, you got Mike Evans and Chris Godwin back. Uh, added Julio Jones, which we'll see what he can do. Is he the Julio Jones of old? Probably not. Is he going to get you some good yards and maybe a couple scores when you're in the red zone, you know, short yardage situation? Eh, probably, you know, and then they've got uh, Cameron Brait stepping in for a retired, as of right now, Rob Gronkowski. Do- would not f- be surprised in any way, shape, or form if we hit the second half of the year and Rob Gronkowski decides to unretire and jump on the bandwagon. But the one question and the one thing I do have a little bit of issue with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers is the offensive line. Mm-hmm. They center, they got center issues out the wazoo. Uh, Ryan Jensen, who I would project probably their starting uh, center, currently listed as their third string center on IR. Uh, they're up, currently listed uh, first string uh, center. Robert Hainsey, uh, according to ESPN.com right now, listed as questionable. Uh, Nick Leverett, their second string center. Uh, ESPN.com currently listed at question as questionable. Uh, I realize I'm no, you know, offensive line guru, but center kind of an important position mm-hmm. when it comes to the offensive side of the ball. Uh, and then you get on the defensive side of the ball. I'm looking at that defense. I'm looking at the names that does not strike me as kind of fearsome as it has in years past. Then you get to the New Orleans Saints, who, like Rich said, they're giving Jameis Winston the ball. Hey, you know, this ain't Drew Brees. Sean Payton is gone. Let's see what you can do, kid. You know, you got Alvin Kamara, who's a great running back there. You got also got Mark Ingram, who's a great ba- a great secondary running back there. You got Michael Thomas, who is coming back after an injury uh, plague season last year. He only played in seven games. So you're going to have, hopefully, have Michael Thomas back for a full season. Added Jarvis Landry. You know, so I think, you know, the Saints are going to do a lot of good stuff on the defensive side of the ball. And like Rich said, adding Tyron Matthew. Honey Badger is going to make a lot of damn difference, and he's going to be extra motivated playing in his home state of Louisiana. Uh, playing at home makes a lot of difference. You get, the Atlanta, you get to the Atlanta Falcons, which, listen, they're ripping that thing down to the studs, and at this point the only stud on left on that house is Kyle Pitts. I feel bad for this kid because there is not a lot to work with, and he's going to be the focus of a lot of targets when he runs into cover. He runs into coverage to try and catch a ball. Uh, you know, listen, Marcus Mariota, nothing against you. You're a journeyman quarterback. You are going just there to fill the hole until they can find who they're going to draft. Cordell Patterson, they're, they're starting running back. Listen, he's a great uh, special teams guy, great return guy. Not all that great at running back. And then you get to their wide receivers, Drake London, who, you know, uh, Olimby, uh, Zacchaeus, and then Byron Edwards, who, you know, and then on defense, there's really nothing. So, like Rich said, they're rebuilding. They're stripping that shit down to the studs. Carolina, you've made some improvements. Let's be honest. I mean, you went from the, the Cam Newton experiment and the Sam Darnold experiment, you know, and, and P.J. Walker's there, but you brought in Baker Mayfield. And Baker Mayfield, probably the biggest chip on a shoulder we've seen in quite some quite time. Quite some time. Quite some time. You know, from all the turmoil with with – uh, Cleveland and everything going on, and then Deshaun Watson getting brought in and all this, he's got a lot to prove, and I think he's going to want to go out there and do it. Christian McCaffrey, 
on paper, good running back. Had him in fantasy, not so much. You know, will he be able to perform? We'll see. You know, he's got some targets to throw to. G.J. Moore, Robbie Anderson. Uh, you got also got Terrace Marshall Jr. and then uh, Tommy Trumbull as his starting tight end. I, I think where I see the division going is I think it's honestly Tampa Bay might still win it. I haven't made a decision yet on who I think is going to win the division. I could see Tampa Bay winning it. But it's going to be a lot closer than it was last year where they won, you know, 13 games and then the second place team won nine. It's going to be a lot closer. Uh, I think Atlanta's going to fall off from their seven wins, and I think Carolina's going to improve from their five. All right, so let's get the worst one out of the way. Atlanta is going to be fighting with Houston for that number one pick. There is absolutely nothing worth talking about except Kyle Pitts. I'm sorry that you're entering the league right now and going there because, man, this is going to be a tough road for you uh, in a very young football career. Drake London was their first round draft pick this year, and I know that I think he's already been having some injury issues. So it's not a good sign for everything going on in Atlanta. And like you touched upon, Marriott is a, a journeyman quarterback. I think his best days are behind him. I think he's an adequate fill in, or like how the Raiders were using him for the Wildcat. I think that that's how you use him at this stage. I don't see him being a solidified number one. And I think there's just so many problems right now with that team on both sides of the ball. Listen, uh, they're going to be lucky if they hit three wins. I'm sorry. I think I'm going to put it out there. I see them really contending with Houston for that number one pick. Like They'll have a top five pick again this year, so not a lot to write home about with that. As far as Tampa Bay goes, we have to remember something. Mm -hmm. The game that they faced the L.A. Rams in for the playoffs. Yes. Tom Brady did not look like Tom Brady in that one. Nope. Kind of looked like he was struggling a little bit. A little bit. A little bit with the ball. And that's why I think he kind of got that retirement talk into him. I think this year you're going to see that drop off. Could be. I really do. And I'm not saying this, obviously, with my me being a Bills fan and, and not liking Brady for the majority of his career. The majority? All of it. Well, let's be honest. I tried spinning it nicely, but yeah. Who's your daddy? Yeah, exactly. He, he finally went to Tampa Bay, and that's why we're winning. So thank you. <laughs> he did as all, all old men do. Went to Florida. Yeah, exactly. But this is a situation where I don't think he is 100%, but I think he wanted to go out on a better note, and I just think, unfortunately, this is going to be like the Peyton Manning farewell tour. Like, could they sneak into the playoffs? Yeah. It's going to be rough, though. They could, but it's going to be a very tough task, especially with if he's not the Tom Brady of recent years. I don't want to say of old because, let's face it, those days are gone. And and there's really no room for error in this because looking at their schedule, they open up in Dallas week one, and then they play the Saints. Green Bay, Kansas City, Atlanta, Pittsburgh, Carolina, Baltimore, the Rams, Seattle. Then they've got a bye week in week 11. Then they come out playing the Cleveland Browns, Saints, uh, San Francisco, Cincinnati, Arizona, Carolina, and Atlanta. So that, that early part of the season, oh, shit. That's they have tough. a lot of playoff teams they're playing. Yeah, that's, it's gonna, and that's going to be the true test. If, if Brady can be serviceable. And I know I'm going to hear a lot of flack for saying that, but let's face it. He's 45. Yeah, he's 45, people. Deal with it. He's not the Tom Brady of old. He's going to be serviceable. He can get you to the playoffs. But if he starts having drop-offs like he had in that game, and that's the one that really stuck out, he's lucky that that was not worse than it should have been. But nevertheless, if he's not 100%, this team ain't going anywhere. So I could see them winding up in third place in this this year. It just it depends on how he comes out the gate. But I think the fact that he retired, he didn't, and like I say, we don't know where we're going to get out of him. Sure, could he turn the switch on? Yeah. yeah. But he has a very rough stretch ahead starting out the gate. That's going to be the tempo. Like after week, after week four, I'll have a better feeling about where they're going to be. So I'm going to pencil him in right now at three. Two, I'm going to give to the Carolina Panthers because I think that Baker is on a very, very – uh, angry war path right now. I think that he's very ticked off at what has happened in Cleveland to run him out. So I think that he is just going to be like literally wanting to shove it up everybody's, you know, where on and saying, you guys were wrong to let me go in Cleveland. Like I think he's, he's just going to be raging out of control down in, Cle- in Carolina. The best part is he doesn't even have to wait to do that. He gets to do it in week one. Yeah. Week one against the Browns. I think week one he's going to do it. The only thing that's going to be kind of interesting, I did not realize who Carolina's offensive coordinator is. Ben McAdoo. Really? Yes. Former head coach of the New York Giants. One of Coach Duffy's personal favorites. So, depends on how he meshes in. The only thing that I had a little bit of question to, but we'll find out week one, 
is I know that there was a little controversy with some of the wide receivers not exactly happy Baker was coming into Carolina. Sure. But listen, he's an upgrade from Sam Darnold, so you don't tell me anything yeah. otherwise. Yeah. Like, that's the one thing with him. So I think that he might sneak out to an early – like, they'll get some early wins. Yeah, they got, a, they got a pretty decent schedule. I mean, I'm looking at it. Like we mentioned, they opening up against the Cleveland Browns week one. Then they've got the New York Giants, uh, New Orleans Saints, Arizona Cardinals, San Francisco, the Los Angeles Rams, Tampa Bay, Atlanta, Cincinnati, Atlanta, Baltimore, Denver, bye week in week 13. Uh, and then they finish out the year against Seattle, Pittsburgh, Detroit, Tampa Bay, and New Orleans. So there's some winnable games in there. Yeah, there definitely are. So... I could see them sneaking into that number two position. I don't think they're going to beat the Saints, though. I think the Saints are going to be very good on both sides of the ball, enough to win this division outright. I think Jameis Winston is going to have a better season than most people are thinking. And like Rich touched upon and you touched upon too, Pat, the fact that you know Tyron Matthews back in uh, you know New Orleans, New Orleans he's, this is going to be something I think he's really going to go – very, very hard to get them over the hump and get them into the playoffs. I think that he's going to be that veteran leader that they need down there and really establish an identity for that team. I mean, the only thing I see is a there's a they have a tough schedule, uh, but you know they open up the season against Atlanta, then they play the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, then they play Carolina, so all three division games, boom, boom, boom. Then they play the Vikings, but unfortunately they play the Vikings in London, England. Hey. Mm. So that will be coming from uh, Tottenham Hotspur Stadium Tottenham. In, in, in in London. Tottenham, yeah. So then uh, they come back to play the Seattle Seahawks, thankfully at home. Uh, then the Bengals, Cardinals, Raiders, Ravens, Steelers, Rams, Niners, Buccaneers. They get a bye finally in Week 14 before finishing the season against the Falcons, the Browns, the Eagles, and the Panthers. So they have a really tough first half of this season, and that's going to be the one thing that's going to hurt them. I mean, they're they're a murderer's row of teams that we've already mentioned that it could be playoff teams like the Raiders and the Ravens. It, we haven't talked about the Rams yet, but obviously we're anticipating them probably being a playoff team. The Niners are have a high hopes. We'll talk about them later as well, and of course the Buccaneers, and you know obviously Atlanta's an easy one, but still, I mean they have a they have a tough schedule. But once again, you can't take away the kid's heart. Exactly. So that being said. To wrap up the NFC South, taking New Orleans, Carolina right behind them. I'm going to say Tampa Bay and Pencil in a three right now. And then, obviously, Atlanta. Good luck if you win three. Uh, I'm going to take the uh, New Orleans Saints at the number one position, uh, you know, but not 13 wins. I think it's going to be maybe around nine or ten. Yeah. Uh, I think Tampa, I think we will see the fall off from Brady. I mean, listen. You don't get better with age, unlike you know the unlike the saying you know things get better with age. Not the case in football. You know things do not get better with age. You fall off when it comes with age. And being a New England Patriots fan and watching Tom Brady play for the better part of twenty some odd years, I noticed the drop off with him in that the playoff game against the Rams. You know, wobble in the football, couldn't throw it as far, shorter than he normally could throw it. I think we're going to finally start to see the fall off. Is it going to be the fall off? You know a la Peyton Manning, maybe. I don't know, but I, I don't think he'll be as crisp, you know, and as sharp as he normally is. He'll he'll mask it, and he'll hide it very well, but I think if you look at you look there with a magnifying glass, you'll start to notice a fall off. Uh, I think, and then in third, we'll have the Carolina Panthers, and then in last, and I'm looking at the Atlanta Falcons schedule. I'm Falcons fans, I apologize. I'm giving you one win. Wow. Because looking at their schedule, New Orleans, the Rams, Seattle, Cleveland, Tampa Bay, San Francisco, Cincinnati, Carolina, the Chargers, Carolina again, the Chicago, Washington, Pittsburgh, bye week in week 14, and then they've got New Orleans, Baltimore, Arizona, and Tampa Bay. I think that one win Ouch. might be Washington. That could be. Very well. Uh, so I got the NFC South lining up like this. <laughs> Honestly, I, I think you guys are all correct. I think it's going to be way tighter. I think the the winner of this division is going to win like 10 games. Mm-hmm. With that being said, let, let's, let's make it interesting. We're all going to pick something different. I think that Baker Mayfield has enough hate in his heart. Wow. That he is going to will, like he did a years ago with Cleveland, will them to the playoffs. He's going to will the Carolina Panthers to the playoffs, knowing that the Browns aren't going to make the playoffs. Now, I'm not saying they're going to make it far. I'm not going to say it's going to be pretty. I'm just going to say that that man has 
hate in his heart. And what better way to stick it to Cleveland than when they're sitting home and he gets to play one playoff game before going home. Yeah. Uh, so I think the, the, the Carolina Panthers are going to win the division. I think in second place is going to be the New Orleans Saints. Uh, I think they're going to have either the same record or very they're either going to be at 10 and – both to be at 10 and 7 and some weird uh, shenanigans of uh, – Rec, uh, you know, tiebreaker, or it's going to be a ten and seven and a nine and eight, uh, still both with winning records. I think honestly, the Buccaneers could be outside looking in, and I, I, they might get nine and eight. They might get eight and nine. It's going to be right in that area. I do think, and once again, I've been a huge Tom Brady fan my 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 entire his entire career. Uh, obviously, I'm older. Well, I'm not older than he is, but mm. you know, I've I've been watching football longer than his career. But I've been a fan of his, uh, even though when people hated on him and everything else, I do think he's the greatest quarterback of all time. Unfortunately, at 45, we saw some of the cracks in that foundation last year. Not saying that he didn't almost make that comeback mm-hmm. on the Rams. That was more on the Rams than it was on Tom Brady, right. honestly, because they played they played the second half of that game like they were uh, uh, already going to win the game, and uh-huh. he almost made the epic comeback. Uh, but with that being said, I think that they're there. And, I, and anybody who doesn't think that, I think that you're lying to yourself at some point in juncture. At 45, listen, if I eat my words and he comes out and has an MVP-type season and they win 14 games, awesome, great, good on him. Yep. And that better be his last season if they make a fucking Super Bowl run and they have 13 or 14 wins. I just don't think it's going to happen this time. And I'm with Pat. I'm <laughs> The Falcons, man, one or two games, tops, tops. You're looking at a top fucking three pick. You're fighting for first round pick, man, which is good for them because they need a good quarterback. So hey, you know, uh, you know, and silver lining. I don't know if they have the infrastructure together to make something happen with that. However, you know, hey, rebuild. We've said for years they need to strip that thing down to the bones. Oh, absolutely. They're finally, they have. they're finally there. Yeah, they're finally there, and that's what they need to do to wrap things up. Interesting football in the NFC, to say the least. Pun intended. So that said, we're going to take our first break. Hit us up on the hashtag, hashtag ODPHPod. What is your thoughts about the NFC least? What is your thoughts about the NFC South? Let's have that conversation, shall we? We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Have you ever found yourself confused about the current state of the MCU or whatever the hell is happening with the DC universe? Do you often have no idea what the hell the difference is between craft beer and that butt ice stuff at the gas station? Well, then look no further. We present to you Hops Geek News. We're yet another geek and beer podcast in an already oversaturated market. All right, all right. We drink and we pretend we know things. More often than not, we don't really know things, but we do talk some really great topics and we most definitely can drink. We'll deliver you news and then dive into any random topic you might have never knew you actually were passionate about. With lots of fun facts about beer. And from Marvel to DC and Star Wars, and to why Die Hard is most definitely a Christmas movie. Which it is. Basically anything that our spouses are sick of hearing us talk about. Join us on YouTube or anywhere you listen to podcasts. New episodes weekly. Just search Hops News. Coming back for the second half of this NFC preview edition of the ODPH podcast for the NFL season. Coming on with Rich from the 3FN podcast in the house for it. Last segment, we talked about the NFC Least, we talked about the NFC South, now let's talk about the NFC North, shall we, Pad? Yeah, so looking at the division standings from last year, the Green Bay Packers won the division with a record of 13-4. and four. Second place was the Minnesota Vikings with a record of 8-9. and nine. Chicago Bears finished third with a record of 6-11. and 11. And the Detroit Lions finished in last with a record of 3-13. and 13. All right, I'm up first. Well, I don't think the things are going to stay the same, although they might. But I, I, I'm going to get some heat early. Let's get some heat. Shall we? Okay. The Green Bay Packer fans, and I know we have some listening. Oh, we do. Oh, shit. And uh, listen, guys, let's not fool ourselves here. You lost Devontae Adams. Yes. Like, you lost, you, you kept you kept there. The sacrifice you made for Aaron Rodgers was losing Devontae Adams. That's how it works. Mm-hmm. Now, that's fine, you say. Uh, Alan Lazard is there. Sammy Watkins is there. Randall Cobb is there. Ain't not a one of them. And no matter how you want to fool yourself, Devontae Adams. And Aaron Rodgers, yeah, great quarterback. But if he spent more time not chatting with Joe Rogan about tripping on ayahuasca and more time throwing footballs, during the preseason, he looked terrible. Yeah. And yes, it's preseason football. But he's the guy who says that I don't throw a football in the offseason. Hey, you put some respect on the Buffalo Bills legend, Sammy Watkins. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the, the thing is, Aaron, Aaron Rodgers will get him the ball, but he ain't going to catch it. Yeah. Let's, let's be honest. <laughs> There's a reason why he's no longer in Buffalo and no longer in Kansas City. Mm. Hmm. 
Am I wrong? No. No. So no. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't paint the picture that Sammy Watkins is going to step in and, and take Devontae Adams' spot. And I hear a lot of Packer fans out there. And listen, I understand you have the two-time reigning MVP, and I think Aaron Rodgers is great. As you heard earlier, <laughs> if you were listening to the FC thing, I said that he is the, the, still the top quarterback in the league until proven otherwise. But once now, once again now, we're at the point where he doesn't have any weapons. And this is an interesting point in his career because that has never happened before. Mm-hmm. This is the least amount of people he has ever had since he has been the quarterback for the Green Bay Packers. Now, with that being said, uh, it looks, you know, maybe it gets better at running backs. Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon. Nope, doesn't get better. Sorry, guys. Uh, tight ends, we got uh, Mercedes Lewis and uh, Robert Tanyan. Nope, doesn't get any better, guys. Listen, this is going to be a, this is going to, if he can pull off the greatest heist, I will say that he deserves to be up there with Tom Brady in the number two spot. Now, I don't think he's going to overtake Brady, but if he somehow pulls it, but let's be honest, even if he pulls off a great season, even if they, how many wins did they have last year, Pat? 13. Even if he has 13 wins, even if they go to the playoffs, we know they're just going to lose to some team that's not as good as them or whatever. San Francisco. Yeah, they're going to lose Frisco. If, if Frisco's there. But even if Frisco, Frisco is even, even if Frisco's not there, they're going to lose to the Rams or they're going to lose to Tampa Bay or they're going to lose to whoever. That might be the team that Baker Mayfield could actually beat. Mm. Why? Because, let's face it, Green Bay Packer fans, with the exception of the fact that you can win a first-round playoff game, you are the Dallas Cowboys of the North. You are a team that underachieves. You are a team that the quarterback can win all the fucking MVPs he wants, but at the end of the day, he doesn't have the Super Bowl rings for it. He's got one, right? He's got one. He's got one. He, he's got one. He lost one, correct? Or did yeah. he not lose? No, he only, he's. Uh, I think he's only, only played one and one once. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, so, that's so he right, does have a ring. He beat, he beat uh, Pittsburgh the yep. one one he was in. He does have a ring. So that means that Ben Roethlisberger has more rings than he does. That means Eli Manning has more rings than he does. Guys, it gets a slippery fucking slope at this point in juncture. He has as many rings as Trent Dilfer. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Not wrong. So, Not wrong. So, so once again, you can be the greatest quarterback in the regular season, but he ain't Tom Brady. Jimmy Garoppolo has more rings than uh, Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> Ooh, that's rough. But listen. Not wrong. I know, wrong. I know, I know a lot of the Packers fans are like, how dare you? That's okay. How dare I? I'm just tired of hearing the bandwagon jumping Packer fans. And if you've been a diehard Packer fan, I feel for you. It's not your fault that you don't have the bandwagon jumpers, but man, they are the loudest group of people that always get cheated when they lose. You guys are the New York Yankees of fucking the NFL. Let's just face it. And that's why a lot of people don't like you. I'm going to throw it out there because I have never seen a, a a fan base that complains more about cheating when losing than the Green Bay Packers. So that is where my anger is coming from. No, you lost. You can't beat the San Francisco 49ers, and they're not that great. They have Jimmy Garoppolo as their starting quarterback. Well, maybe not now, but not they now. did. They did. And, and he didn't even throw an offensive touchdown, and you still lost. <laughs> you still have. how did the San Francisco 49ers beat your team without throwing a, actually without scoring a single offensive touchdown there was no offensive touchdowns because the, the Niners didn't score an offensive touchdown the entire playoffs right, right. that's true it's right facts. it's facts oh yeah you're and right they came into Green Bay where it's cold as shit and they're from San Francisco now mind you San Francisco's got the same weather as us in New York so this season it does get cold there but not Green Bay cold. yeah not Green Bay cold that's a whole different animal so I'm sorry Green Bay Packer fans it is interesting. You probably are going to win this division. I know I went off on a tie right here. You're probably going to win this division because, let's be honest, the NFC North is trash. Uh, the Detroit Lions are on the rise. They did some great things in the uh, the draft, but like everybody else, I think they're going to have an improved record from last year. But I don't think that the draft is going to make them, ex- you know, jump them to the front of the line this year. I think they're still rebuilding. Uh, the Minnesota Vikings are the Minnesota Vikings. They're the only other team that underachieves more than the Packers. And think about it. They do that with Kirk Cousins. So, it's it's kind of like a weird thing because, hey, you have the MVP of two years running and I think three times overall against a guy who is somehow fleeced a bunch of teams into paying him money. Yeah. And they are underachieving at the same level. So whatever. And then you have the Chicago Bears and God damn. The <laughs> Bears right now, the only thing interesting with the Bears right now is arguing over if they're going to get a new field or not. And that's it. And then they just get a new stadium not too long well, ago. Well, no, 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 no. They repaired Soldier oh, Field. Right. And they want to do that again. But they're like, no, we want a new field or we're moving. Good luck with that, Bears fans. But, oh, Jesus. I'm sorry. The The AFC North is as is probably as bad, if not worse, than the NFC East. Yeah. It's definitely something, Pat. I would say, you know, the a- the NFC North is in the same position the AFC East was in the early 2010s. 
you had one team at the top, a team that was fairly close behind them, and then a steep drop off. Mm -hmm. You know, I think Green Bay, this is still their division to lose because, yes, they did lose Devontae Adams. Uh, but they still have Aaron Rodgers, who, let's face it, that man is lethal from the other side of the 50-yard line with time left. You know, he is not showing any drop-off. He still shows he's still got any, like we said, he's a two-time reigning uh, NFL MVP. I think he makes up for a lot of holes in that offense. And listen, I think he can make a lot of chicken salad with a lot of chicken shit. You know, are any of those wide receivers that we mentioned, Alan Lazard, Sammy Watkins, Randall Cobbs, on the same level as Devontae Adams? No, but can Aaron Rodgers bring them close to that level because of his play and his ability? Yes. So I think this is clearly the Green Bay Packers division to lose. I think then you got to go to Minnesota Vikings, which let's face it, great running back, Dalvin Cook, great receiving core, Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen, fantastic, you know, offensive weapons. The one thing I think that's holding them back, Kirk Cousins, because mm-hmm. he had a, he had a Great year last year, 4,221 yards passing, 33 touchdowns, seven interceptions, you know, but obviously you got the, you got the monster of the mountain, so to speak in Aaron Rodgers. Mm -hmm. I don't think if you give me a choice between Kirk Cousins and Aaron Rodgers to to play on my fantasy team, I'm taking Rodgers all goddamn day. Then you look at the Chicago bears. Fucking hell. These guys are bad. (laughs) Just (laughs) Justin Fields. Uh, 1,870 yards passing last year, 31st in the league, seven touchdowns, 31st in the league, 10 interceptions tied for ninth in the league. Now, granted, he only played in 12 games, but still not showing a lot of faith out of this guy. You've got David Montgomery as their running back. And then tell me if you pick any of these guys for your fantasy football team. Hell, I'll even say a backup. You got a guy injured and you need a quick pick me up for a week before your, one of your other starters comes back in. Darnell Mooney, Byron Pringle, Vel- Vellis Jones Jr., or Cole Komet, their tight end. Who? Exactly. You know, so they've got jack fucking shit going on. And But then you get to Detroit. Uh, and Detroit, you know what? You showed some spark last year. You showed some moxie. Yeah, you've only finished 3-12, and 12, but some of those wins at the end of the season showed, it was really impressive. Uh, you do have, at the, looking at their depth chart, you got Jared Goff returning as quarterback. DeAndre Swift is their running back. Amon Ra St. Brown is their, one of their receivers. Also, DJ Cl- uh, Chark, or Clark, excuse me, uh, Josh Reynolds, and then TJ Hawkinson is their tight end. I, do, I think they'll improve from their th- uh, three wins last year. Will I say they're going to rock it up into the second place divi- in the division? No, but I think I think they'll improve, and I think Chicago's going to regress. So I'm going to say last place is going to be Chicago outright. I think there's just a lot of problems there. Justin Fields has got a lot to do with Cole Komet. Was he not the tight end at Notre Dame? I, uh, I will say, look. I want to say his name sounds familiar, so I'm going to say possibly because uh, for some reason I'm connecting him with Coach Duffy for some reason. So that's usually how that. Kind and if of he goes. was at Notre Dame, we're going to hear all about this one. Yeah. So that, yes, he was. That's right. Okay, so that's why I clicked in about him. Still, who exactly? So Chicago is not there yet. Uh, they got a lot of problems to fix. So I'm going to say they're going to be in that top five draft pick again. Uh, there's just no, there's no bright side to it. I mean, Justin Fields, I mean, he's got nothing to work with, so it's a little disservice to him. So maybe you can find some diamonds in the rough somewhere, but I don't see it happening here. At three, I'm going to take Minnesota. I know everybody's going to kind of go like, what? But I think you hit it right on the head, Pat. Kirk Cousins is so inconsistent, and it seems like the only time he ever shows up in games, in my opinion, is when you piss him off. I think that he has been given a very, very lucrative contract, and he hasn't played up to that potential for it. And I think that that has been something that's been hurting this team because I think that on paper they should be the number one team in this division outright. And Aaron Rodgers, with or without him, they should be the number one. They're not. And I think that they just keep underproducing. Dalvin Cook is a great running back when he's on the field, but he's had some signs of injury. So if he's not there... Who's the one creating some offense there? And I think, unfortunately, with Cousins' lack of consistency, that's going to hurt this team. The Lions, I think, are going to improve enough to get second place. Now, I'm not going to say they're, we're talking playoffs unless they could sneak in for that last spot. But I think what Dan Campbell has done with this team is really kind of give them some new energy. They did have a very, very smart draft. They grabbed Aiden Hutchinson on defense, which I think is going to help him tremendously. And then even looking at their offense, we have to remember, too, before he got hurt, DeAndre Swift was on a tear at the beginning of the season. 
I know that they drafted Jameis Williamson or Williams out of uh, number twelve overall last year too. So that said, so they do got some sparks on that offensive side of the ball. Jared Goff, I don't think the bar is set that high for him because I mean he's had that kind of fall from grace leaving L.A. to go to Detroit. But I think he might have a small chip on his shoulder too because the Lions are just considered so much of an afterthought. Nobody's paying attention to him. Their record did not reflect their their games because they they're, were they're close. They're a lot closer than people think. It just depends on like you know a pass here, a run here. Well, because if I remember correctly too, they would have beaten Baltimore last year were it not for uh, Justin Tucker breaking the NFL record for the longest field goal. Yeah, I mean that's it is kind of like that. literally they they would have been four wins were it not for Justin fucking Tucker. Right, but that's kind of like the example with them. So I think they could sneak into. A nine and eight if they play their cards right. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at their schedule. Uh, they've got the Philadelphia Eagles to open the season. Then they've got Washington, Minnesota, Seattle, New England by week and week six. Then they've got Dallas, Miami, Green Bay, Chicago, the Giants, Buffalo, Jacksonville, Minnesota, the Jets, Carolina, Chicago, and Green Bay to close the year. So that after you get that past that bye week, there's a lot of winnable games in there. There's a, there's a favorable schedule for Detroit. I mean, I think that they're on definitely on the build, and I, I could agree with you with the the possibly even sneaking into a nine eight eight nine record. Mm-hmm. I, I think that they've done the right things as far as the front office and coaching staff, and now into players and selecting the right players. So, and with that schedule, whew, it's going to make it a lot easier. Yeah, that's the one thing they got to just have a little bit of luck on their side for once. Now. I, like I say, I'm not going to call the shot that they're going to get there. I could see them getting that seventh playoff position if uh, if the stars all align. I think there's enough talent that they have if they can just stay healthy and and just really make a you know a strong foot forward. They could put it together. I still think they're going to be behind Green Bay by default. But the one question I had too is like when Aaron Rodgers is talking about all these uh, things he's doing on the off season. Mm-hmm. Did the NFL like not go test him? Well, technically speaking, they're not against the law. Yeah, rules okay. Of the NFL. Yeah, it, it doesn't break. It doesn't break any of the rules. Ayahuasca is a. Uh, by not, the way, that's that's how you pronounce it. Is ayahuasca? Thank you. It's not on the list. That is that is that is a natural root thing that, and he did it in the proper way, so they want to be able to go after that. Uh, and if he's and now, as you know, if he's partaking allegedly in marijuana, I don't know the legality of it in Wisconsin, but I do know that it's legal now in the uh, NFL as far as they don't test for it. Yeah, because where I was going with this is like, I mean, where he's doing his, his off time is his own business, but I figured that would just be something like you would hear like the NFL would be coming. That was what, yeah, no, I, I, see what I see what you're saying, but as soon as that came out within like hours, it was it, like, uh, it was either like uh, Ian Rappaport or Adam Schefter, one of those insider guys was like, hey, yeah, in case you're wondering if he's going to get tested for it or not, no, it's not on the list. Yeah, because I'd be worried, like if I was the Packers, I'd be worried would this become like a distraction or something if he's like trying to do this. But I mean, but he shows up on the game day field. I mean, that's the end of the day, and that's what you really want to see. And at the same time it doesn't stay in your system long although it did go into the part of him claiming to be a martyr in the league and that the league's out to get him uh that was one of his portions of the joe rogan podcast and before people i don't usually tune in joe rogan i did listen to that one i have also heard him a lot on the pat mcafee show i think he's a cool guy i got nothing against aaron Rodgers, as you heard it in the ranks and i know i went on a rant but as you heard i still placed him as my number one quarterback oh, in the league until proven otherwise however if the league had something against him it doesn't show on the schedule where i only counted four or five instances where they're going to have some problems because here's their schedule uh-huh. they have the minnesota vikings to open the season they they have the Chicago Bears, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, the New England Patriots, the New York Jets, the New York Giants, back-to-back, by oh, the way. Uh, one of them is in England. The Giants, they're playing in England. And then the Jets, they will be playing. That's on, uh, sorry, October 9th, just so everybody knows. By the way, 8.30 in the morning is the translation time for uh, <laughs> that central time. So uh, East Coast, that would be 9.30. 9.30. So, uh, anyways, the Jets, they play when they're coming back. So, that was a fucking gift. How do, how do you go to London and then come back to play the Jets at yeah, home? Yeah, that's a handoff. Uh, that's, that's really a win for you. Uh, oh, by the way, their next game, the Washington Commanders, followed by the Buffalo Bills, then the Detroit Lions, the Dallas Cowboys, the Tennessee Titans, the Philadelphia Eagles, the Chicago Bears. They get a bye week before they come back to play the Los Angeles Lambs, Rams at Lambeau in December. The Miami Dolphins, uh, that is in Miami. And then they finish out their their season at Lambeau Field for two home games against the Minnesota Vikings and Detroit Lions, respectively. If you're looking for outside division games, I counted four challenging games or five, depending upon how the Patriots are playing. Yeah, tops. And, and, you know, obviously that was no disrespect for the Patriots fan in the room or any other Patriots fan, but we had already talked about how the Patriots is going to be a question mark. And, of course, against a good team like... uh, 
the the Packers, that's questionable. But once again, that's four or five tough non-division games. Then you have that. So eleven games. So you're giving a. So that's eleven games if you count the division games. So therefore, you literally are giving them a freebie on seven games. If I'm adding this correctly, yeah, it sounds it, and that's what that's what I said. Like it sounds really puzzling with that. I just want to point out the last time I remember the Patriots playing the Packers, and it could have been another time before this, but this is the last time I remember the Patriots playing the Packers. The Packers squib kicked it, and a, one of our offensive guards, Logan Mankins, picked up the ball and returned it for like 50 yards. Uh, I'm just I just want to say squib kicks. Uh, lo- still look hurts. up look up Logan Mankins Green Bay Packers. Yeah, but you know, you know what I mean, though. Yeah, no, exactly. That's extremely. And I do terrible. remember that, by the way. The, the that was a great play. Was a great play. You could time that race with a sundial. <laughs> yeah, it, it, the only reason he ends up not scoring a touchdown and only getting into within the five yard line is because he literally ran out of gas. Yeah, he did. Literally, l- l- but then again, he's a big man. Yeah. <laughs> That's like me running that yeah. far now. Uh, but no, on, on a serious note, though. Uh, Packers should walk away easily with this division. Mm. I mean, for somebody who says the league's out to get them, they obviously helped them in the in the, in the scheduling department. And I know there's going to be people out there, being, eh, she don't understand. no, I do understand. Uh, that's a pretty light schedule, that is a light compared, schedule. To, compared to a lot of the other good teams in the league. Detroit even has a little light schedule. I guess it was lucky for them to pull the AFC East or the NFC East and the AFC East mm-hmm. as uh, opponents, though, mm-hmm. which does give you a mix up with the Bills because the Bills are obviously going to light you on fire. And it doesn't matter. I didn't look it up, but it, I didn't note it. But it doesn't matter if they're playing in Lambeau or Buffalo. It's the same weather. Yeah, so it's, <laughs> they cancel each other out. Yeah. So you know, at the same time, so there's no advantage there. But I mean. To get the, the one thing they have going for them, they get the Rams and Lambo in December. The one team that they do get that's, a, 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 you know, obviously the reigning Super Bowl champions and obviously a favorite to go to the playoffs once again, they get lucky and get them on the 19th of December in Lambo. Yeah. It's not like they're playing at SoFi. Yeah. That's what I say. Like, they're getting a lot of favorable treatment. And that's why I said with Aaron Rodgers' like current behavior and like how he's been kind of a little vocal about it. Like it just it, it's just a weird outside looking in thing for me. Mm-hmm. And I'm just saying, like, how focused is he going to be on football? But as, like I say, we've seen him show up on the field, and he's been he's balled out every so time he's, he's a there. Two-time reigning MVP. Yeah, so I mean, I don't think it has to be anything to worry about. So I think as long as his head's still in there, I still take them as number one. I'm going with the Lions for number two, three Vikings because I just think they're underachieving, and well, the Bears. I mean, they're going to contend with Houston and Atlanta. Yeah, Vikings. It's going to be tough looking at their schedule. They've got the Green Bay Packers to open up. Then they've got the Philadelphia Eagles, Detroit Lions, New Orleans, Chicago, Miami bye week in week seven. Uh, then they've got Arizona, Washington, Buffalo, Dallas, New England, Jets, uh, Detroit, uh, Indianapolis, Giants, Green Bay, and Chicago to close out the year. Somehow they drew a harder schedule. Yeah. yeah. I still don't understand that. Yeah, And then uh, so for my standings, I've got the Green Bay Packers finishing in first place, the Minnesota Vikings finishing in second place, the Detroit Lions finishing in third, and then the Chicago Bears finishing in fourth. I got the Green Bay Packers finishing in first. Yes, I know I went on a whatever, but yes, we know they're going to win. I do have the Detroit Lions also in second place. I think Detroit's going to be on the come up. And uh, if you're a Green Bay fan, the scariest things are going to be next year and beyond because I I can only see better things for Detroit. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mind you, that could all change when we actually get in the meat and potatoes of the season. But like on paper and how we've seen them in the preseason and what we've heard from their organization, I think they're finally going in the right direction. So I think the North is not – this is the last year that the Packers have – a distinct advantage in the North, in my opinion. I agree. I think next year you're going to really have to dogfight the uh, the Detroit Lions. And, of course, the Packers don't have the revenue mm-hmm. because, as you know, they're really close to that cap. Yeah. Uh, so then I got in uh, third place, I got the Minnesota Vikings because, yeah, underachievers. And somehow Kirk Cousins just keeps getting re-upped for more money. Whoever his agent is, can you hook them up with me because I <laughs> need some money. Facts. And last but certainly not least, yeah, the Chicago Bears. When we talk about the Falcons being down to nuts and bolts and the Houston Texans being down to nuts and bolts, Chicago is down to nuts and bolts. And the the weird part is I don't think they realize they're down to nuts and bolts. The other two teams I think are in a rebuilding phase, even though Houston can't get out of their own way. But I think they know they're rebuilding. Mm -hmm. And on the other end of things... Atlanta th- seems like they're doing the things the right way. I, I, I do like their ownership there. I do think that they'll end up uh, in a few years being back, you know, as things cycle through, they'll be back as being a decent team. They just need a, a franchise quarterback to build around. 
and then some other pieces. But obviously, going down there, they're going to be able to do that. They got some draft picks coming from the Colts, et cetera, et cetera. So I think they're making the right decisions. However, I don't feel that for Chicago. Yeah. I feel like Chicago still thinks, for whatever reason, they're being competitive, and they're not. They're still talking 1986. And it's like, you know, those days, <laughs> the dub bears, those yep. days are over, guys. 85. Those days days, those days are over. They were competitive a few years back when they had Forte at, at running back and, uh, you know, the, the rounding <laughs> uh, quarterback situation wasn't exactly a lock in. Well, you had Grossman for a little while, and then you had uh, what's his name there? Uh, well, that's where Maserati was yeah, originally. Yep, and Mitch came in, then, and then there was you know all Cade McCown was there for a yep. little bit. Like they had like this revolving they door, but somehow, yeah. but you know what? Somehow it's they still Cleveland were level. They were still winning though. They were still competing, so that was kind of interesting. But I don't think I think those days are over. I mean, most of that was probably a testament to Lovey Smith. All right, here you and go. And great coaching. All right, here you go. So in uh, 2006, you had Rex Grossman. 2007, you had Rex Grossman. Brian Grease and Kyle Orton. 2000, Orton, that's Kyle, what I was you had, uh, 2008, you had Kyle Orton and Grossman as well. 2009, Jay Cutler. Uh, you know, 2010, Jay Cutler and Todd Collins. Uh, 2011, Jay Cutler, Caleb Henney, Josh McCown. 2012, Jay Cutler, Jason Campbell. Uh, 2013, Jason Cutler, Jay, uh, Jay Cutler, and then uh, Josh McCown. Uh, 2014, Jay Cutler, Jimmy Clausen. 2015, Jay Cutler and Jimmy Clausen again. 2016, Matt Barkley, Jay Cutler, Brian Hoyer, holy fuck. Uh, 2017, Maserati Mitch and Mike Glennon. Uh, 2018, uh, Mitchell Trubisky, excuse me, uh, Mitchell Trubisky and Mike Glennon. Uh, Then you had 2018, Mitchell Trubisky and Chase Daniel. 2019, Mitchell Trubisky and Chase Daniel again. Uh, 2020, Mitchell Trubisky and Nick Foles. And then last year you had Justin Fields, Andy Dalton, and Nick Foles. Yeah, I mean, it's a carousel to say the least. Right, but like I said, when we were going into those uh, like 2015, 2014 seasons with Levy Smith there, remember there was a Super Bowl run in uh, like, what, 2010 or 2009, 2009? Yeah, the one they faced Against the, the yeah. Colts? Well, no, that was 2006. Is it six? Okay, oh, that was, well, see, that, it, it feels like yesterday. I guess when you get old, it all makes, you know. Yeah, everything together. blends. But at the same point in juncture, like going in even those mid, uh, like 2015, 2014 season, even with the carousel with Forte and stuff at the running back position, you ended up still competing against – uh, the Packers and actually yeah. putting up a fight. So that was really weird that now they're in this position where it's just like, eh, eh, eh. yeah, it's a crazy thing to see, but I think the bears are just going to be in that last <laughs> place for quite a while. That division is not stacking up compared to our final division of preview. And that is the NFC West. Yeah, so looking at the standings from last year, you had the L.A. Rams uh, win the division, finishing 12-5. and five. Oh, by the way, they also won the Super Bowl. Uh, you had the Arizona Cardinals finish in second place with a record of 11-6. and six. The San Francisco 49ers finish in third with a record of 10-7. and seven. And the Seattle Seahawks finish in last place with a record of 7-10. and 10. Well, just like we talked about in the AFC West, I'm going to say it here. The NFC West is the toughest division in the NFC. <laughs> like, it's kind of weird. That the West picks. And, and and that's not just on paper. Just look at the, the what's going on. So I do think there's changes this year, though. Uh, the, let's start with the Rams. The Rams are pretty much returning everybody. Pretty much. There's Almost. a couple of pieces that aren't there. But uh, I don't think anything that tremendously hurts them. Obviously, Von Miller not being there kind of sucks. But they're a fucking beast so i don't think it matters i mean you still have some of the best coverage guys in the business and, and even though i'm not a big jalen ramsey fan uh you got to give him his props and his due uh, aaron donald or as i like to call him a aaron donald yeah is uh back and you know even though you know it, it's weird that he thought about retirement because he's not really that old no uh but at the same point in juncture he's still getting it done on the field yeah. he's a, he's he's you know obviously he's single-handedly he was shut out of the game but then single-handedly pretty much won the super bowl i'm i, I swear to god to it yeah if that he does oh, not yeah. get that sack look up go look back, at the highlight look at the, look at the highlight reel if he doesn't get the sack burrow has an, one or two more seconds he's going to throw the ball down the field to chase and that's going to be the game because we, jalen ramsey is on his face yeah 20 yards behind chase no yeah because we didn't realize because you know they obviously show the quarterback but yeah no he rich is absolutely right because you know ramsey had that sack at the end of the game and then they showed another camera shot where downfield I think it was Jamar Chase was open and had it was either Ramsey or whoever the cornerback was Ramsey. Ramsey he had was on his face. He, he had Ramsey dead to rights burned, but because Donald got in there and got the sack, uh, Burrow never saw him. And let's talk about that offensive side of the ball, baby. Uh, Matt Stafford. Who would have thought? Never mind. We all knew. Yeah, we all knew. You know that his loyalty to Detroit is admirable, uh, but finally got put into a position where 
now he's you know the star that we all knew he could be, and he's a great quarterback. And uh, I, you know, you, you hear people like, should he be in the Hall of Fame? I don't know. Uh, give him another great year like he had last year, and maybe one other great year. You know, two more great years. And yes, right now I just think that he's just a really good quarterback, and he's an mm-hmm. elite. He is an elite quarterback. He was an elite quarterback in Detroit. We just didn't know that shit because Detroit was that bad. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he's he's got a great receiving core behind him. He's got a great running back. I mean, the the Rams are set up to win, baby. The Rams are really set up to win, and uh, you know I think that they probably will. Uh, I'm not saying the Super Bowl yet, but I'm just saying they will. Uh, the Niners. Uh, we're going with that question mark, baby. We're going with the you know finally giving the young kid the ball. Uh, I don't know if this is good or bad, but you know they took care of the Debo Samuel situation, so kudos to them. Mm-hmm. Got that all ordered and in house. Uh, you know, turning over the ball now. I, I we can only see where it's going to go from there. I don't know. The defense still looks good though. That's one of those unsung defenses over there in uh, San Francisco. There's not a lot of uh, tons of names. I mean, you know, Bose is there, but yeah. there's not a ton of like name recognition, if you will. Only the fact of those of us who love defensive teams and they have some guys and they stop some shit. Uh, let's go to the Arizona Cardinals. They're the biggest question mark in the NFC West because on paper. They should be a killer team. And remember, last year they started off with the hottest record in the NFL. And, you know, but then again, you got Kyler Murray, who Kyler Murray in his mind thinks that he's Patrick Mahomes. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he really is Patrick Mahomes, though. No. And I don't mean that as disrespectful. If he would just keep his shit on the field and play football, maybe he could be Patrick Mahomes. But he's more like, and I know know he's a good quarterback – and I know we were talking about him earlier. He's more like a Russell Wilson, mm-hmm. where he's a good quarterback. Is he an elite quarterback? Possibly. He can be an elite quarterback, or he can also just be a very good quarterback on the outskirts of being elite. Can he win football games? Absolutely. But you have to be consistent in showing up. And even with Russ was in his prime in Seattle, that is exactly uh, what, how he was as a quarterback, in my right. opinion. There were seasons where he was untouchable, but then there were seasons where he was like, eh. And that's what Kyler Murray is right now. We don't know where he's going to get. Because remember, he's the guy who took his, you know, all the Cardinal stuff off his social medias and threw a bitch fit and everything else. So we don't know where that is. But you got on the other side of the ball, you got the best cover safety in the league in Buda Baker. Oh, my God, yeah. Is there anybody possibly better than a defensive back? You could argue Trayvon Diggs. I don't know. I think Buda Baker is probably the best defensive back in the league, in my opinion. Obviously, people can have their own opinions to that, but hey, yeah, the proof's in the pudding. We watched that man fucking run, run down, down D- DK. DK Metcalf. Listen, if you can run down DK Metcalf, you yeah. are a beast. Yes. Uh, and not to mention, they have a great secondary outside of him. They also have a, they have a great defense. Arizona has really got a great defense, and that's really where they're going to be able to win. But they are a question mark, in my opinion. And last but certainly not least, we have the team that is rebuilding. They are not saying they're rebuilding because I guess Pete Carroll thinks that's the a bad word. Yeah. But let's be honest. The Seahawks had a fire sale with the exception of Lockett and Metcalf, but now we don't have anybody get Lockett or Metcalf the ball. So we're they're in big trouble up in Seattle. And I know. I love you, dog. I do. But you know you're in for a long season, brother. Uh, the, the, they should have been in that uh, Baker Mayfield hunt. You would have thought. Because, you, I mean, Baker's not the greatest quarterback, but he's serviceable. And if you can get the ball to DK and lock it, that's all you got to do there. Yeah. Like, literally, you know, we like to make the joke, I could be the quarterback for the Seattle Seahawks. But that's not true. Because even the guy that they have there, it's just not, it's just not good. And... Um, I just don't think they're going to have a winning season. I think they will be in the basement. So, but the other, you know, I think that the Niners in the, uh, in the, uh, sorry, the Rams are going to be your playoff teams for sure. And with a question mark on the Cardinals, Pato. Yeah, no, I think the Rams are going to be good yet again. You know, the only thing on offense I think that might be a little questionable is Odell Beckham Jr. is not there. Obviously, he's got the injury, but he's a free agent. You know, it's not signed with anybody. Uh, currently filling his role as Allen Robinson the second, but still got Cam Akers, still got Cooper Cup. You know, still got Tyler Higby. Stafford still there, so I think they should be good. Maybe another twelve and five year, maybe eleven and six. You know, you never know. We got to give the devil his due. Robinson had a great catch in the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. This is true. Uh, when. Uh, Odell went out. So yeah. That's give, him, true. give him credit. Give the double his due. You know, then you get to the Arizona, which Kyler Murray, you know, got to, showing some signs. James Conner there at running back. Added Hollywood Brown uh, from Baltimore. Mm-hmm. You got A.J. Green, you know, still there. You got Zach Ertz as their tight end. Uh, Rondell Moore is their, uh, one, their other wide receiver. Obviously, when he comes back, DeAndre Hopkins, they got a great offensive side of the football. San Francisco, listen, I nothing against Trey Lance. I just don't know. You know, you've got uh, Elijah Mitchell as their uh, starting running back. Debo Samuel 
Daniel, Brandon uh, uh, Yoke, and uh, Jawan Jen- Jennings as their wide receivers. And then you got George Kittle. Listen, George Kittle is about the only sound thing on that offense. And then you got uh, Depot Samuel. Trey Lance, I just don't know. I'm not a Niners fan, so I can't make a call one way or the other. It's it's a little suspect for me. And then Seattle. I mean, you got Geno Smith and Drew Locke as your starting quarterbacks. It, it's going to be ugly. I mean, you got Lockett and Metcalf. Those are your bright spots. But listen, I would enjoy a little, uh, DK Metcalf for the time you have him because I would not be surprised when his contract comes up if he leaves Seattle. So I think it, I think obviously for uh, the division, I think it's going to be the Rams to lose. I mean, I, I could see Arizona making a run at him, though, just because, you, like I said, that offensive side of the ball is, on paper, very good. Well, let's start from the bottom here. Seattle is rebuilding. I don't care what anybody wants to spin for. It is what it is. Drew Locke and Geno Smith are your quarterbacks. This is not exactly striking fear in the rest of the division, let alone the rest of the league, not at this stage of the game. And I think that this is going to be a changing of the guard season. Albeit, though, I do think that uh, Kenneth Walker might be a fantasy player that you might want to keep your eye on because with Seattle's issues with running backs, he could sneak in there and definitely make some noise. For them, not saying game changer, but somebody might want to stash on your bench if you're playing fantasy football this year. But because otherwise, there really is not a lot to be excited about in Seattle. Sorry, it just isn't. I think if they win six games, I'll call it a miracle at this stage, just because the team is rebuilding so badly that, sure, you can throw it to Metcalf all day, but he's going to get double teamed. So who else is going to step up and make some points? That's your argument you have. Then you have to take a look at Arizona. And I know kind of ranking them this low might seem like a little crazy, but they are much like Miami, in my opinion. Yeah. You have, on paper, the best wide receiver core in all of football. Albeit, though, you don't have Christian Kirk, the you know, $80, $90 million man, but that's a, that's a whole other story. But with Kyler Murray and Kingsbury's offense, you have to see is there going to be any growth. Because I think Kingsbury relies too much on the college style instead of the NFL style. Mm, maybe. And that wins in some cases and that lear- and that loses in some cases. And I think that that's something that we don't have a consistent product on the field all the time. Murray makes up for a lot with his running ability, and that does help. But as we've seen in this offseason, when you're having the drama and the new uh, cool thing, I guess, is to take all your social media – uh, counts, you know, any links from your team down and, and kind of like showing that you're mad. I think that kind of immaturity is, is something that is going to rub players the wrong way. So I would imagine that by the time now, since the deal has already worked out, Murray's going to be there, they're going to be able to get this done and get this going forward. It just depends on how that translates on the field because if he's not ready to go because he was too much worried about his offseason stuff, then that, that's going to be a problem. And I think that that could be a major distraction moving forward. Not even DeAndre Hopkins there for six games is also a big one, too. I want to point out they have a tough schedule in Arizona as well. They open the season against the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, that is at home, at least. But then they go on the road the following week to take on the Las Vegas Raiders. The following week, they play the Los Angeles Rams. Ooh. The week after that, they get Carolina at uh, Carolina. Then they play the Philadelphia Eagles at home, the Seattle Seahawks on the road, the Saints at home, the Vikings on the road. It seems like they're going back and forth all, all, all season. Seattle at home. Then they play the Rams for the second time. That one will be at SoFi in Week 10 before playing the Niners, the Chargers, then getting a bye week, then playing the Patriots, the Broncos, the Buccaneers, the Falcons, and they end the season at Levi Stadium against the Niners. Mm. So they have a tough schedule. So if uh, they're going to come out to prove something, they got to come out to prove it instantly. Yeah, I don't think that they have any kind of room for error right now. Like They really need to set a tempo, especially with the two other teams in this division. I think San Francisco is going to steal that second spot. And the one thing about them is they're almost like Indianapolis. They have a great defense. But can you honestly name anybody on that defense? No. No. Exactly. Well, Bosa. Well, Bosa, that's that's probably the only one. But they play solid. They play very, very traditional style. Like they don't they'll bend but they don't break. And that does help. The offensive side of the ball, though, that's kind of the biggest X factor that you have with this team. Trey Lance is gonna get the ball. You know, Jimmy G is there just pretty much as insurance, but really for, for how, now for how long. I mean, that's kind of another X factor there. The running game suspect. 
and then obviously you have Debo as your you, your number one wide receiver, but there's only sometimes you can run him, you know, in the screenplay out back and you know like do the ends around where he's that's where he excels at. Like yeah. he's he's more of a running back than he is a wide receiver per se. Yeah. But if you can shut him down, then you put the the offense in the hands of Kittle, which is not bad, but you really limit what you can do. So. That's going to be a tough thing, really. Yeah, and uh, looking at the 49ers schedule, they open up against Chicago, then they have Seattle, Denver, the Rams, Carolina, Atlanta, Kansas City, the Rams again, by week in week nine. Then they go to the Chargers. They play the Chargers, Cardinals, Saints, Miami, Tampa Bay, Seattle, Washington, Vegas, and Arizona to close out the year. Yeah, so, I mean, that's not an easy one for them. And I think that with it all comes down to Trey Lance's play. I think that if he can play good, not great, they'll be okay. If he can play great, that's even better bonus win. They could make a run for that division. They could, in, in all honesty. Mm-hmm. But if he struggles out the gate, they're going to be in problem. They're going to have problems because Jimmy G, I think, is checked out completely. He's just there getting a paycheck till he finds a place to go. So that being said, the Rams are going to win this one by default. But the only question I had is Stafford, I guess, was having arm issues. Uh, yeah, he had he had like some bulge or something on both. He had like golf arm and baseball arm or something. I forget it was, what it was. It was on some both, kind of crazy thing. It was on both sides of the arm. Yeah, so that's on his throwing arm. So he has not done that much in this offseason. Now, I'm not saying that this is going to be something that is a, that's a season breaker by any means. But if they start out – rusty out the gate because obviously you have that super bowl hangover you're not fully all in that could be a problem especially f- for them in this division it's not to say they can't make up ground because they're so solid on both sides of the ball they could but obviously they open with the bills and then after that it's not getting any easier well, after that you got the falcons in week two then they have the cardinals in week three niners in week four cowboys in week five the panthers in week six and they do get a week seven bye so with that that Incident with his arm and him not being able to play, that's a good time to have a, mm-hmm. a break because then they come back Niners, Buccaneers, Cardinals, Saints, Chiefs, Seahawks, Raiders, Packers, Broncos, Chargers, Seahawks to end the season. And that is actually at Seattle to end the season. So, I mean, they're not even going to get home field advantage and they're going to be dealing with the 12th man because that's still going to be a thing regardless of how oh, yeah. good or oh, bad yeah. Seahawks they'll, are. They'll show up. So, I mean, if they're super close in their record at that point in juncture, that crowd could be the determining factor whether uh, the Rams win the division or not, depending upon what their record is coming in. Yeah, so, I mean, depending on how they come out of the gate, like I said, because after the Bills, I mean, Atlanta should be an easy W no matter how Stafford's arm is. I mean, hell, they could even sit them and they'd be okay. It, I think they have a good possibility to split the beginning of the season, and uh, they have a, so they have six games in a week off. There's there's a good three and three there, easy I would say. Although, uh, you know, they could also go four and or you know four and two or two and four. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, it's going to depend on that. I think if they're closer to that three and three, four and two, getting that break, and Stafford's still looking good and getting you know more in there, I think after the break they'll be okay. Yeah, I do too. So I mean, to wrap it up for this one, I think obviously Seattle is dead last. Uh, not as bad as Atlanta, but definitely something to keep an eye on because rebuilding is going to be a term that you're going to hear a lot with this team moving forward. Third place, I'm going to give to Arizona right now just because we got to see a little what Kyler Murray's got because if he doesn't have it all put together, this is going to be a problem, especially for how stacked this division is for the upper top two teams. It all comes down to the 49ers at number two because they're going to be living and dying off their defense. This will remind me a lot of that Ravens defense that beat the Giants in the Super Bowl way back when, but just a lot less talented. They're going to be very solid on that side of the ball, but that offense is going to be a big suspect. So if they can put some points together, they'll be okay. But in all fairness, this should be the Rams to win. And uh, I'll say they'll take this division like an 11-5 range. I think they can definitely swing that, or 11-6. to six. I can't remember that extra game. It keeps throwing me off. Mm-hmm. But it's it's one of the situations where I think that they could sneak this out and win outright with that. Pat? Uh, yeah, I got in last place the Seattle Seahawks. Listen, it's not going to be pretty. Uh, then I've got the San Francisco 49ers uh, finishing in third, the L.A. Rams in second place, and then i got the Arizona Cardinals in first place. Listen, I think that through no fault of the L.A. Rams, I think they're going to be good, just that the whole thing with uh, you know Matthew Stafford's arm, not quite sure how it's going to play out. I think it could affect him. And I just like the weapons uh, Arizona's got on the offensive side of the ball. I think it'll be able to win some games for him. Uh, in last place, I think we're a clean sweep in last place with the Seahawks. And I'll take this a step further because I like to have Dog at least be happy a little bit. 
I say that you lock down Lockett and Metcalf, and then you say, let's let you pull the, the Miami job, and you just say, let's throw some fucking games this year <laughs> so you can go out and get a quarterback, franchise quarterback, and rebuild properly, and then you have the weapons for it. I love it. I'm just saying. I mean, I, I, know, I know it's against the rules, but, I mean, it's been done before. Uh, in third place, I'm going to actually have the uh, San Francisco 49ers. Uh, I that defense is great, but at some point, Jokes, you got to score some offensive touchdowns, and that's what they struggled with last year, and they struggled with it in the playoffs, and somehow still made it to the uh, conference championship game. So kudos to them. But at some point in juncture, that's going to come to bite you in the ass. And thankfully, they have a great defense. But how long can they ho- hold out before you break? Even the Ravens. You know, you still had to have the offense put at least a touchdown on the board so that way, you know, you know, you can win or at least three field goals so you can win nine to six. You know what I mean? Back when the Ravens were a dominant mm-hmm. team, same thing with Pittsburgh. And and how long can you hold that out, especially in this high powered uh NFC West? And then going out and having to play the AFC West teams as well as as part of their schedule this year. And then uh, I got in second place, I'm going to go with the Cardinals. Yes, they are a question mark. They have just so many damn weapons on offense. They have so many weapons on defense. And if they could only just put it together, this team could really go places. My problem is I don't have enough faith in Kyler Murray quite yet. He hasn't shown me that I should have faith in him. So I think that when the pressure's on, he's going to crack just like he's always does. And that's why I have him in second place. Do I think they could possibly win the division? Absolutely. However, it... I don't. I don't know if I trust Kyler Murray. I honestly, I don't. Yeah. And in first place, until otherwise proven, I understand that there's some question marks with Matthew Stafford, but I think the Rams are going to take this. I don't think Matthew. I think Matthew Stafford's an old school tough guy. Um, unless it's something that's broken, I don't think it's going to affect him as much as we 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 are worried about. You know, we go back to the days of Brett Favre and even you know Tom Brady in his prime. Those guys played injured all the time. And I, I and I'm not saying that it's right to play injured, but he's going to gut it out, and he has something to prove. I think he wants to prove that he's not only an elite court, an elite quarterback, but he's also a Hall of Fame quarterback. So I think that with that, he's going to push himself. Think about how much he pushed himself in Detroit with some terrible teams. Uh, can you imagine having the team he has now and mm-hmm. not pushing himself? I doubt that's going to happen. So I'm going to fully anticipate Matthew Stafford being on top of his game. Well, that being said, it's a tough division. So I can I see them winning 11 to 13 games. Uh, if they get real like in the groove, I could see them winning 13 even with a tough schedule because, hey, they're a hell of a team. But I think they're probably going to be more around that 11 range if you really want to know. And I think that uh, Arizona will probably win 10 games, maybe 11. And then I will go with the, the Niners being at least – Nine and eight, maybe even ten and seven. So I think all three teams are going to finish above the uh, the the Mason Dixon line of uh, the NFL, if you will. And then uh, the Seahawks, not so much. Uh, I I'm, I'm going to say that they probably will be better than a couple of the other teams we've mentioned. So unfortunately, I don't see them getting the number one pick. I don't even see them getting a top five pick. But they're going to be a top ten pick, probably closer to six or seven. Yeah, I could definitely see that. So I can see them winning three or four games, which is going to punish them a little bit, just because. Yeah, if they could have just dropped some more games, they could be in line to get a first uh, top five pick. But we've got so many terrible teams, as we pointed out, with Chicago and Houston and Atlanta. <laughs> and Atlanta. And it, 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 I don't think they're th- as bad as those teams, but I still don't think they're good in their rebuilding. No, I definitely agree with you about that. It's going to be a long season for them. It's going to be an interesting one to watch, though, regardless. So that being said, we're going to take our final break. In the meantime, hit us up on the hashtag, hashtag ODPHpod. Give us your thoughts about the NFC North and the NFC West. Who you got winning those divisions? We're going to take that final break, and we'll be right back. You ever wondered what comics Mark from Vale Mai is into? What Zach from Left Behind's favorite MCU movies are? Well, Metalcore Nerds is the show for you. My name is Sean Ma, and here at Metalcore Nerds, we cover the latest things in pop culture, whether it be Star Wars, Marvel, DC, AEW, and everything else in between. You can listen to the show every Monday on Adobe Howl at 7 p.m. Eastern, or find it anywhere you find podcasts after a debut on the radio station. Coming back for the final segment on this edition of the NFL preview for the ODPH podcast with Rich from 3FN in the house. We gave you our picks of the entire NFC conference. Last podcast, we gave you the picks of the entire AFC conference. So now it's time to talk playoffs and time to talk who is going to the Super Bowl and win the whole thing, starting with Rich. Playoffs? Talk about the playoffs? Got to win a game. Anyways, uh, so let's go with NFC. We're going to start in the NFC East. I have the Philadelphia Eagles winning the NFC East. Uh, Then we're going to go to the NFC North, where I have the Green Bay Packers winning the NFC North. NFC South, I already said it earlier in my shocking pick, Carolina Panthers are my favorite to win that. And then in the NFC West, I'm going with the defending Super Bowl champions, the Los Angeles Rams. 
uh, the three wild card picks. I have the Arizona Cardinals, the San Francisco 49ers, and last but certainly not least, and I think they are going to squeeze in with the thinnest of margins. And this is my leap pick, by the way, my heart pick. The Detroit Lions. The Detroit Lions with a 9-8 and eight record are going to sweep in there somehow and just nah, take it in there. And once again, it might not happen, but that's my heart pick because you have to have one. Casey from the Nerdy Photographer Podcast is marking out right now about I, this. Season. You know what? Mark out about it because I really think it's going to happen. That's, my, that's really my heart pick. I am going to be rooting for the Detroit Lions as long as they're not <laughs> playing the Las Vegas Raiders or the Buffalo Bills. Uh, the New England Patriots is up in the air. Depends on the week. <laughs> <laughs> Bad. Uh, I've got the uh, Philadelphia Eagles winning the NFC East, the Green Bay Packers winning the NFC North, the Arizona Cardinals winning the NFC uh, West, and then the NFC South uh, going to the uh, New Orleans Saints. Uh, For my wild card, I've got the Dallas Cowboys, and again, no particular order, just ran them out of my head, Uh, the Dallas Cowboys, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and the Los Angeles Rams. All right, so for my picks, uh, Eagles are winning the East outright. Green Bay's got the North. In the South, the Saints. And in the West, the Rams. And as for the wild cards, San Francisco, Arizona, and I'm with you on Detroit. I'm dead serious about Detroit this stand one. up what? Exactly. Maybe we just watched too much Motor City Machine Guns wrestling lately. Detroit, what? It's, it's, it's an A-town, baby. Yeah. It's an A-town for GCW. It's an A-town for us to talk about. Detroit, what? Exactly. No, the, I mean, I think the Lions are just going to do just enough to sneak in. I think they're going to be one and dones, but they are going to sneak in there. And I, I just think that there's always that one team of destiny that sneaks out throughout the season. I think this is their time finally. Got to have that heart pick. Yeah, I mean, well, you got to. Because, I mean, otherwise I was going to say it would be Dallas, but I think Dallas is going to wind up choking somewhere along the way. Sorry, Dre. <laughs> we're going to get some angry tweets from him. That's okay. We're gonna, I'm, I'm getting. You're going to get angry tweets from Green Bay, so am yeah, I. exactly. There's going to be angry tweets from You know, it's fine. Coach Duffy's going to disown all of us for not even the Giants, but because we, we made a reference that a Notre Dame player, we didn't know who the hell it was. I yeah. mean, half the NFC East hates me, so yeah, that's that, okay. This is true. Uh, I, went dou- I doubled down on that this year. I also doubled down on my hatred of, of the NFC North. So, hey. hey, send all your hate. I love it. Yes. You can find us on Twitter at ODPH Podcast and 3FN Podcast. We, respectively yes we t- we talked to everybody so that said rich who do you have winning the nfc and who you got in the super bowl here man this is a tough one i'm gonna be honest with you like it was easy slam dunk for me to pick my afc pick because it was kind of like the pick that i'm like okay last year i picked it they didn't make it but they could have they should have they just didn't and i just think that they're such a good team and once again there's a lot of teams which is, should be harder to pick the afc because there's just a lot of great teams mm-hmm. but the thing is is that the nfc there's a more spread out of teams i, I don't think that the nfc teams and mind you the the champions are in the nfc but i i just don't think that they're as spread out it's kind of like the nba yeah when you look at the nba you know you go to certain teams and there's just like and that's how it is like on the west of of the nba you have like your lock teams that are like good and then there's a fall off and on the east there's a little more of a battle and I think that's the way it is in the NFL with the AFC and NFC. The AFC, there's better teams, but there's fewer of them, but they battle. And then in the NFC, anything it's anybody's game. There's some great teams, but it's anybody's game. So with that being said, I'm actually going to pick for the Los Angeles Rams to return to the Super Bowl. I think they're going to go back. I think that Matthew Stafford, like I said before, I think he's really focused on not only guaranteeing himself as being an elite quarterback, but a Hall of Fame quarterback. I think he wants to shut a lot of people up. So I think the Rams are going to return to the Super Bowl. All right. Uh, I I agree with Rich. This is not as easy to pick as the AFC was. Uh, this is a lot tar- harder. I think it's going to be the Green Bay Packers. I think the uh, proverbial monkey is not in that division with the <laughs> San Francisco 49ers. Uh, but, I, you know, it's no disrespect to the other, other teams, uh, unless you're in the NFC East. Uh, you know, but I think the Packers just stand out above these other teams when it comes time to the playoffs because they have Aaron Rodgers. And I think he'll finally be able to surmount that mountain and get back to to the Super Bowl. This is really tough, as you've all both said great points, and I fully agree. The AFC is tougher to pick because I think there's just so much of a talent shift over in there. I think the NFC does struggle because you have your upper echelon teams, and there's a big drop-off when we start talking about playoff teams, maybe with the exception of the NFC West. I just think everybody else is just not there with those division leaders. But that said, I have to make a pick about who's going to get there. 
And I am also thinking it's going to be the LA Rams repeating. I think it's going to be tough, but I think they are playing at such a high level. And the fact that they haven't lost too many players, Von Miller obviously is out, but I don't think it's going to cripple them too much. I think that they're going to be still sound as long as Stafford is. At fifty percent, he's better than some of the other options in this other di- in the rest of the division. So I think they're going to sneak there. So it's going to be the Rams going back. And if I'm going with my pick of them versus Baltimore, I am going to take the Rams in that situation to go back to back. Taking them back to back. Um, well, much like I picked the, I'm glad you said that about the Rams because much like I picked the Bills to go there, it's because I was like, okay, we have good coaching staff. Both teams have good coaching staffs. Both teams have good offenses. Both teams have good defenses. So it's a complete team. And I think that's at the end of the day what you need to win. I don't think you can have just one side of the ball anymore. I don't think you can just have, you know, questionable coaching and the players will get you by. I just, I just don't think that that's where these teams that can't get over that hump, uh, like we talked about earlier with the Chargers and sometimes even with the Packers. Is is the there's a bad call somewhere, mm-hmm. and it's just kind of like ah, this is where we're at. With that being said, I got the Bills and the Rams in the Super Bowl, so we got the two complete teams. And listen, man, it's about goddamn time as a New Yorker. I just want a, the New York team to fucking win. So, as we all know, and I've said it on this podcast before. I love football. I watch football every weekend. Me and Ken will be picking back up into that tradition somehow, some way. Yeah. I know with work it's going to be different, but still, we're going to do it. We're going to make sure we get to watch football games. But I, I watch any team, but I tend, because of who I watch football with, to root for the Bills. Obviously, I'm a Raiders fan, so I root for the Raiders over everybody. So if the Raiders are playing the Bills, I'm rooting for the Raiders. Uh, my kid's a Steelers fan, so I tend to root for the Steelers. But if the Raiders are playing the Steelers, I root for the Raiders. Right. There's nothing that comes above the Raiders. And, and in a lot of aspects, there's really no NFC team I root for, but I will watch the games, and I just want to see a good game. There's a couple teams that I'd like to root against. Sorry, Dre. I'm, I'm it's, <laughs> it's old school to root against the Cowboys. Like, who doesn't want to root against the Cowboys? And obviously, because I live in the state of New York, I root against those filthy fucking Giants, diet. it. <laughs> I don't care who wins as long as it ain't them Giants. Because when they pulled off those upsets against New England, it was the worst times of my life. You heard that here first. You heard it here. Because then I had to hear shit about it. Still to this day, I have to hear shit about those wins. Give it up. Give it up. <laughs> Anyways, that being said, <laughs> I think finally we're going to right the wrongs of the past. The Buffalo Bills are going to be champions. And then we don't have to hear shit from the Giants and Jets fans. Eh, even though the Jets fans, I, I, I don't care. You know, I'll root for the Jets too because somebody's got to show them some love. But still, <laughs> <laughs> but still, we don't have to hear shit from the Giants fans for a while. So Buffalo is my pick to win the Super Bowl this year over the Los Angeles Rams. Padawan J. Uh, so for my uh, Super Bowl matchup, I've got the Las Vegas Raiders taking on the Green Bay Packers. Christ almighty, somebody got a quarter. Um, this is really tough because you got the Raiders, who I think are very good offensively and d- defensively on the side of the ball. But then on the flip side, you do have Aaron Rodgers, who is the two-time reigning, defending, undisputed uh, NFC uh, MVP. I think, and Christ almighty, I'm flipping a coin in my head. I think it's going to be the Las Vegas Raiders. I think, hey. I think as good as Aaron Rodgers is, there's a lot on that defense working against him and just as much on the offense working against him. I think the Raiders will be able to pull it off. I just want to point this out. With him saying that, I'm very happy with you, Pad. Thank you for my uh, ego. Uh, I will say this, though. If I was booking this like wrestling – be a great book because I think about Devonte Adams meets Aaron Rodgers in the Super Bowl, oh, right, and then itself. and then Devonte defeats. Well, he, he's not the quarterback, but he defeats Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers can't get over that hump. It makes a lot of an interesting storyline if you're a wrestling fan. Uh, I don't know if it'll happen, but I, I mean, I would love to see that Super Bowl as well. Obviously, as a Raiders fan, I would be buying all sorts of shit. Oh my god, yeah. I mean, I mean, I want to be going to the Super Bowl because I don't got money for that, brother. Holy shit. <laughs> Yeah, you know, let's Patreons take off for both of us, yeah, because that took it. Send Rich to the Super Bowl. It's going to be a lot, guys. Ex- exactly. We'll set up like a, what, GoFundMe we'll or something. We'll set up GoFundMe or Kickstarter, yeah. But then I'd have to lie and say that I have, like, some kind of rare disease and I got much like, time to live, and then they're going to find out about the lie, and then they're going to make me try to feel like an asshole, and I'm going to tell you folks right now, I mean, it's going to make me sound like an asshole now. <laughs> I still went to the Super Bowl, so I would have cared. Yeah, this is true. This is true. <laughs> and if my team won, I would really not care. So, yes, judge me if you will. I'm sorry, but at least I admit it. Everybody else would have done the same thing, but you don't want to admit it. Yeah. At least I will. Yeah, this is true. 
So, Pad, before we wrap this up, so you got a couple notes to cap the season off here? Yeah, so obviously outside of the overseas games, there are a couple of notable games uh, we should mention this year for this upcoming season, obviously one of which being the Thanksgiving Day games, uh, which take place on Thursday, November 24th, 2022. Uh, At 1230 Eastern on CBS, you have the Buffalo Bills taking on the Detroit Lions in Detroit. Uh, At 4.30 p.m. on Fox, you have the New York Giants taking on the Dallas Cowboys in Dallas. And then at 8.20 p.m. on NBC, you have the New England Patriots taking on the Minnesota Vikings in Minnesota. Uh, And then because of the way the calendar falls this year, Christmas is on a Sunday. So there is a bunch of games taking place on December 24th. Look those up at your own leisure. Uh, But the ones we want to mention are there are some games taking place on Sunday. Take that, NBA. Take that. Sunday, Mm -hmm. December 25th, 2022. Uh, At 1 p.m. Eastern on Fox, you have the Green Bay Packers taking on the Miami Dolphins in Miami. At 4.30 p.m. Eastern on CBS, you have the Denver Broncos taking on the L.A. Rams in the L.A. And then at 8.20 p.m. on NBC, you have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers taking on the Arizona Cardinals in Arizona. Interesting choices, by the way. Yeah, very, very interesting choices about this. So, Rich, before we get into the final Locks and Leaps segment, why don't you, well, first and foremost, thank you for coming through for the NFL preview shows. Oh, absolutely. This is my joy every year. It's a long time every year, but I enjoy it every year because I like talking football at the end of the day. Absolutely. And why don't you tell everybody where they can find you? Oh, let's keep it simple. It's 3FNpodcast.com. All the social medias are there. All the links are on there. Patreon, uh, T Public, uh, Twitch channel, all that happy jazz at 3FNpodcast.com. Also, while you're there, you can check out the 3FN podcast. Uh, you can you can find it anywhere you get great podcasts, but there is a player up there if you'd like to listen to it on the website. Also, there's a player for 607TWS up there. And if you go to Friends of the Show, there's a player for the ODPH podcast as well. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And on top of that, you know, music guests that we have, uh, there's a directory for that. There's a directory for uh, the local sponsors who help bring everything to you commercial free and you know everything else so one stop shop find out all your information at 3fnpodcast.com and might I add in there that uh, for all the great wrestling talk on 607 TWS make sure you guys are listening and following it's growing by leaps and bounds and once again we would like to separate ourselves from relationships that we might have had with people who may or may not have bit people yes uh, I cannot condone that uh, I would like to say that I am on the side of Larry the dog because Larry was looking at him pretty weird, allegedly, because that's his gimmick, brother, and he violated it. So that's who I feel bad for in all of this situation. Yes, indeed. Justice Larry Housen. For, justice for Larry. <laughs> that's right, damn it. <laughs> that whole situation, man. Make sure you're following 607 TWS for more updates on that wrestling because – Depending on what goes down, we might have to do an impromptu episode before next week, so definitely make sure to follow that. But before we put the final stamp of approval on this NFL preview show, if you're a longtime listener of the ODPH, you know it's locks and leaps season. But if you're new to the podcast, first and foremost, thank you for checking us out. We have a little contest that we do with some of our friends throughout the content creating platform. And basically what we do is we take teams that are favored, thus, thus being locks according to the Vegas line and leaps of those being underdogs and we do a pick em game with throughout the entire regular season of the NFL and it is by invite only kind of like we would like to give a little prestige for it I'm sitting in the room with two former winners as well that have definitely are looking to come back and take the crown from mm-hmm. uh, from our friend JT from the East Coast Avengers uh, any final uh, parting shots for the the rest of the field pad yeah, good luck Hey, listen, they listened to me last year. I said somebody step up and try to beat us, and they did, which is nice. I will say this. I said this to you guys uh, off air. Uh, I'm at, I'm looking to have some fun and have some more bold predictions this year. He's picking uh, the commanders for every week. Oh, dude, I, I, I'm not that bold. Uh, but no, <laughs> That's Coach Duffy. That's Coach Duffy. By the way, <laughs> I've, heard the, I've heard that Coach Duffy is picking the, the commanders even over his New York football giants to win that division. That is not allegedly. That is true. Yes. And if he tries to dispute that, Trust me, it's three to one. So anyways, <laughs> with that being said, though, I would like to point out the fact that I'm going to be more bold this year. That doesn't mean I'm not trying to win. I just think that, uh, you know, in the past I have my strategy and I usually come in pretty good with doing my strategy. But I, I want to do a little more bold and have a little more fun with these picks. You're going to notice that up front. But uh, also, please, please stay within the damn rules this year. Yes. <laughs> come on, guys. We post one Vegas line in the chat. That is the one that rules all. Anything else we'll just consider disqualified this year. Yes. And also on top of that, remember, it is two locks, two leaps. And please, 
if you have a question about the line, just ask. Yes. Somebody will help you. I promise. Yes, we will. We, we won't. Otherwise, we're just going to give you the commanders. The and, entire I'm not, season. and I'm not being rude. No. I am just saying <laughs> that every year we have an issue. And it's usually not even the first couple weeks. Somehow it pops up in like week five or six or seven or eight or whatever. One time it showed week 13. I know, which is weird because you would think by then we'd all be pros at this. But I'm just saying we have now, you know, back when we first were doing this, it was one and one. Mm -hmm. Now it's two and two, which is nice. A total of six points because obviously if your leap uh, covers the, or if there was, yeah. You know, if the lock covers the spread, spread, it's an extra extra point. point. Yeah, you get an extra point for each. So you can actually get two extra points a week. So you can get a max of six points. There it is. Damn, I said it almost wrong. But there it is. There's the rules for all the people who, because maybe you want to play along at home. Yeah. Because well, you, here's the thing. If you play along at home, maybe you can and not, and you're not going to be part of it. But if you can send it in and say, hey, I beat you guys and prove that shit, then maybe we can add you to the pool sometime. Yeah, we could. Or maybe, you know, maybe we'll do something. We'll mail you some stickers or something. We'll get you like a swag pack. You could be, you could be like Fulham. Yes. And try to get back into the Champions League. And that's fine. I'm all for that. So I'm just saying. Don't keep hope alive. Play along at home. It's a lot of fun. And also make sure you message us because you can tell us we're wrong or we're right or we're indifferent. Yeah, because we put the we put it out on Twitter. We put it out on our Facebook. That's where the primary driver is for us if you want By to keep way, track of this year, wanna... I'm going to put all of my picks on Twitter after I pick them. And uh, guys, it depends on the day because sometimes I'm busy. Yes. Understandable. And also the rule is still in effect correct that if you miss a week for whatever reason, yep. you can just rule. double pick the pad yep. on J rule. Okay, yep. we're good. Yes, so that is still in there. Everybody that's in the field will should have a copy of the rules uh, in their uh, inboxes. If not, DM me and I'll make sure we get this out. Because this year's field is as follows. Yours truly is in the field. Padawan J is in the field. JT from the East Coast Avengers is in the field defending champion. Your coach, my coach, the coach. Winnie can take time away from his uh, Rocky-esque comeback to the... Uh, professional semi lacrosse league also his dad duties his wife posted their like schedule for the month of september and the, where their kids have to go on practices and all that god damn well just let your kids pick again because they did a better job than you did last year this is facts this is absolutely that's facts. actually true yeah we're th- that's not a sh- that's not a shoot or that's not a work that's or let your wife pick yeah. she also does a better job yeah aaron's always welcome to join the field she just hasn't yet but well, she-, she could just pick for for coach because that way he might have a chance of winning yes this is true uh, let's see. Mac East is in from the We Get Dub podcast. Evan the Great from Crossover Collision is in the field. Joey DiCarlo from the So Wizard podcast, who will be on the show next week, he is in the field. JVD from Crossover Collision is in the field. Rich from 3FN is in the field. Matt from Hops Geeks News is in the field. Brian Wayne from the che- from the Cheers to Comics podcast is in the field. Jay West from We Get Dubbed is in the field. And joining the field this year... From the Brody Sports Talk, Caleb and Derek are in the field. And last but certainly not least, Mike from the Multiverse of Badness, you are in the field. So that said, we're going to give you our one lock and one leap that we'll be talking about next week on the show, starting with Pad. Uh, So for my lock, I'm going to go with the Carolina Panthers, uh, currently favored by one and a half points. Uh, over the, <laughs> excuse me, uh, Cleveland Browns. I think Baker going to want to make a big statement very early. And then for my leap, I'm going to take the New England Patriots, currently uh, un- underdogs, by three and a half points uh, down there in Miami. Ooh, all right. Rich? <coughs> well, for my uh, wonderful, wonderful lock, I am going with the Buffalo Bills to beat the <laughs> Los Angeles Rams. Currently, they are favored by two and a half points. So a field goal will get me what I need. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is true. So also, uh, for my leap, I am going to go and I'm do something. As you guys notice, I did not pick them to be the division winner. I am a very pessimistic uh, person. I am a diehard Raiders fan. But I, I understand our place in the world. But with that being said... I am going with the Raiders to defeat the Los Angeles Chargers this first game of the season. I think if we punch them in the mouth early, it's going to be a good thing. So I'm going to roll with the black hole. Raiders are going to beat the Chargers. That is my leap. For my lock, I am taking the Baltimore Ravens minus seven over the New York Jets. I think they're going to get started on the Lamar Jackson uh, contract trail to get that money, and I think that he's definitely going to earn it. I think he's going to win and win big against them. And then my leap. Well, I know he's not in Buffalo anymore, but still the Maserati has a place in my heart. I am going to take Pittsburgh plus six and a half over the Bengals to start the season out. So obviously uh, Pittsburgh does very well when they're underdogs. So we'll see if that keeps up and true. So stay tuned for that next week, and we'll have the results for week one of the of Locks and Leaps, man. Can't wait to get started on that. 
So we'll just wrap it up very short and sweet for anything and everything that is the ODPH. You can be found at odphpodcast.com. For the one only Pat one j Thank you, thank you. For Rich from 3FN. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me on. I can't wait to do this again. I'm sure I'll stop it in the football season some other time. And uh, seriously, though, I have not, for over a decade now, been friends with Scott. Stop asking <laughs> a grown man these questions. I'm your host, Ken M. Thank you, as always, for listening to the ODPH Podcast, better known as the Ocho Duro Parlay Hour. See you next time. Punch. I'm gonna beat him to the punch Cause I can't break